Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us here in the WPSU studios. I'm Patrick Smith, membership director for the station. It is our winter fundraising uh, period, and as we try to do multiple times throughout the year, we're devoting tonight to local programming. And tonight, it is the 90th in the Our Town series, and here to introduce the show, my favorite Lewistonian, Kevin Conaway. That's right. This is a special one for me tonight. This is Our Town, Lewistown. And Tell your friends and neighbors who have, may have moved on from the Lewistown area, you can also watch this at WPSU.org slash live streaming. So, And we're always glad to hear from folks from California, folks from Florida. So we want to hear from Lewistownians, proud and strong. Absolutely. If you've got friends or neighbors or relatives who are members of the armed services and maybe they're stationed far away from home at this point, why not let them know about the ability to watch through streaming? And also, don't forget, we have great stories coming up, but it's also a great way to support your station with a call throughout the show. Lots right of great now, stories. Our town, Lewistown, right? Our town, Lewistown. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Mayor Deborah Bargo. Welcome to Our Town, Lewistown. Welcome to Lewistown, Pennsylvania. Located in Mifflin County along the Juniata River, Lewistown displays a vibrant sense of community and is proud of its history, its unmatched beauty, and its future promise. Today, residents of all ages are actively celebrating their town's heritage and working toward its goals together. Join us as local residents show and tell everything that makes their community a great hometown. Your friends and neighbors welcome you to Our Town, Lewistown. Support for Our Town, Lewistown comes from Hostetler's Truck Bodies and Trailers, Route 322, Milroy. Serving the Lewistown community for over 80 years. Information at dkhostetler.com. Kish Bank, serving the community for 106 years. Offering banking, insurance, financial planning, and travel services. Kish Bank, expect more. Standard Steel in Burnham, Pennsylvania. Depending on the skills and resourcefulness of the people from our area communities since 1795. Valley View Retirement Community, located in Big Valley, Belleville, offering rehab services for all ages. Information at 717-935-2105. And viewers like you. Thank you. I'm Forrest Fisher. I'm the current president of the Mifflin County Historical Society. And we believe that History is our story, and I'm here to share some of Lewistown's story. Lewistown is situated at the confluence of Kish Creek and the Junietta River. And the Pennsylvania Canal, which was built in the 1820s, paralleled the Junietta River, and Lewistown became uh, a junction, a main stopping point along the canal. Some of the portions of our town, Water Street, for example, is where the wharves, warehouses, and other commercial activities happen uh, for the canal. The first courthouse was erected in uh, 1789. That's when the county was founded. It was a two-story log structure, and the jail was in the first floor, and the courtroom was in the second floor. The second courthouse was built out in front of this one actually in the square, in the center of the square, uh, in 1789. This courthouse that we're in now, this is the third, was built in 1843. That's actually the same year that Charles Dickens traveled on the Pennsylvania Canal and passed through Lewistown, which is one of the highlights of the canal days. Dorcas Buchanan is the first European woman to settle in what became Mifflin County. Now, she was here in the 1750s. Dorcas had a remarkable life. She was widowed twice, and this was the frontier. She maintained a trading business. She lived to a ripe old age into her 90s, and she's buried in the Old Town Cemetery on a handmade diamond-shaped uh, marker Dorcas Buchanan actually owned the land that became Lewistown. The Museum of the Mifflin County Historical Society is called McCoy House. Uh, 
It's the birthplace of Major General Frank Ross McCoy, who was a soldier and diplomat. His home has held the collections of the Historical Society since about 1972. The Victorian parlor, for example, is typical of the era in Lewistown of, of that age, in the mid-1800s. Mid Mifflin County has somewhat of a uh, history of the Underground Railroad. And in 1836, a slave narrative was written by Charles Ball. He was the slave, and it was written by a local attorney. We have an exhibit at the museum that explains that early connection. And it appeared several years before Uncle Tom's Cabin. The stories that I recall from my great-grandmother, who also lived here, that's where my interest and love of history came from. We have such a rich and varied history that involves so many individuals who came and established their lives here. It's a community that has grown over the years, appreciates their history, and speaking from the historical society's point of view, history is who we are. Hi, I'm Jeff Hughes. I grew up here in Lewistown, Pennsylvania, and now I work over the mountain, as they say. I recently had the opportunity to purchase a drone, an unmanned aircraft, and I thought it would be a great opportunity to be able to show Lewistown from the air. My name is Barbara Hare, and I'm here to talk about the South Hills Goose Day Fun Fest. 
The Fun Fest is a free community event, and we incorporate local businesses, nonprofits, uh, schools, and we bring them all together. This is our third year, and we started out just um, a half a street beside the historic courthouse. We had about 200 people attend. This year we were at Rec Park, and we had about 450 people. We also partnered up with Murph Radio. Rocco Pilato called me and said he wanted to try and break the world's record for the largest game of Duck Duck Goose. It was just a great event for the community and all of us involved as well. The goal of the Fun Fest is just to offer free entertainment. We also have bands there. We have games for children. There's free food. Uh, Senator Corman has sponsors of Bounce House. It's just a lot of fun for all of us, even those who are putting it together. We enjoy the event. Goose Day has been part of the Juniata River Valley for centuries. The tradition is on September 29th, if you eat goose, you'll have prosperity throughout the year. You know, a lot of restaurants serve goose. There's a lot of discounts at different stores. I was actually contacted three years ago by Cher Harpster, who's a member of Rotary. And she said, you know what? Why don't we do this fun fest? South Hills was happy to sponsor it. So we're happy to be a part of it. I cannot do it alone. My volunteers are just incredible. I actually get my whole school involved. All my clubs are involved, my students. They just really stepped up to the plate and said, hey, we want to be a part of it. I think it's really important to show the students that, you know, we need to give back. Maybe people don't have a lot of money and can't give a contribution. Time is valuable. Time has a price. So that is more than adequate to give for a volunteer opportunity. So I hope they continue it. I hope once they graduate and they get their job, they remember their time with Goose Fest and they continue it on, maybe with their children or even where their business, where they're working and being a part of it down the road. Hopefully we can continue it for many years to come. My name is Brad Williams and I'm here to speak about Monument Square and the stone from Lincoln's tomb. The square uh, went by many different names. It was a market square, and a diamond square, farmer's market, and finally uh, became a monument square. When the late 1800s, they decided to put a monument there honoring the soldiers and sailors of Mifflin County that fought in the Civil War. When they were trying to raise some money for this monument, for the women baked pies, and children and kids that saved pennies, the community come together and did that, a great thing. The cornerstone is actually a piece of granite from Lincoln's tomb whenever they were redoing the tomb. Robert Burns Hoover was part of the Logan Guard. The uh, Logan Guard were the very first responders to go to Lincoln's aid in the Civil War. Hoover was a drummer boy and later on a soldier. After that, he moved and settled in Springfield, Illinois. He was also chairman of the Lincoln's Memorial Foundation. He made a special request to have one of the stones out of the memorial because uh, Mifflin County was the first responders uh, to answer a call. His request was, uh, was granted. When it came to town in the late 1800s, it was placed in the window of the Mifflin County National Bank and stayed there until the time the monument was built in 1906. When I was commander of Mifflin County Veterans Association, we decided to do some restorations on the monument and the stone. We had the raised letters inked and set in. We were responsible for getting new cannon carriages. The cannons were Napoleon-style cannons, and they have serial numbers that falls right into the Civil War era, but we're not exactly sure if they were actually in battle. So we put some new mortar bases up and did the cans over. To Lewistown being what it is and all the great things that happened there with the Juniata River and the railroad and all that, and the Logan Guard, we figured the square, the Monument Square, is like the diamond and the ring. I'm a life member of Vietnam Veterans of America, life member of Disabled American Veterans. The military background makes me proud. My whole family is military. Came back from the Revolutionary War, they just always been involved. I'm just a Marine Corps, and there's nothing real special about me, except uh, 
I belong to a unique group of people called America's Youngest Warriors. I actually enlisted uh, uh, just before my 16th birthday when I was 15 in, uh, in 1971. I used to go to Florida. I was discharged out of NAS Jacks, uh, out of the Marine Corps. It's like a duck out of water. But every time when I would start coming home, as soon as I get to about Virginia and start seeing the mountains, I got this feeling of peace and could relax. Finally realized after a few years, this is where my roots are. I'm Ed Forsyth. Uh, I'm here to talk about uh, railroading in general uh, throughout Lewistown area, Mifflin County, and also the Mifflin County Model Railroad Club. Railroading in general uh, pretty much built this community. At one time, the Lewistown freight yards and station were the, the end of the line for the Pensy Railroad. We have the oldest train station from the Pennsylvania Railroad, and it was opened here in Lewistown in September of 1849. Been in operation ever since. It's currently owned and operated by the Pennsylvania Railroad Historical and Technical Society. Amtrak still uses it as a station. So we've had a lot of railroading history here in uh, all of Mifflin County, and uh, the Mifflin County Model Railroad Club has sort of replicated the main lines of the Pennsylvania Railroad. We have the uh, replica of the Lewistown Station and the Lewistown Yard, the old roundhouse uh, uh, that burned down uh, many years ago. We have a replica of the Rockville Bridge in Harrisburg. We try to give homage to the history of the area. The Railroad Club started in the 1960s by a group of uh, gentlemen. They had a love of railroading. They went from house to house working on each other's layouts. And now we are located at 3 West Monument Square. We have a large 45 by 65 foot HO layout. And we also have a 24 by 26 foot O gauge layout. At Christmas time, we, when we have our open house dates, thousands of people come in from this area, but also outside the area. And we enjoy sharing what we create. It's not just about the trains that run, it's the artistry in building the layout and the scenery details. Uh, we've had some very, very uh, good artists who have helped uh, create what we show. I got the passion very early in life. I got my first train six weeks before I turned two. I played with that train extensively at Christmas time only. In high school, I got into tearing that train apart to find out why it did not work. And subsequently built a, a little business doing that. And I still have that first train. And it runs quite well. Lewistown has always just been a small town where you know practically everyone. And I grew up in Lewistown. I never had a desire to leave. Lewistown and Mifflin County has just always just been special to me because of what we have here. My name is Deborah Bargo, and I'm going to tell you about the Lewistown train station. The Lewistown train station is the oldest uh, remaining structure that was built by the, the Pennsylvania Railroad uh, Company. In 1849, it was erected and it was used for freight only. In uh, 1868, uh, the building was enlarged and renovated and uh, was used then as a passenger rail service. I remember as a kid, my parents taking my three sisters and I over to the train station. What a thrill it was to see the trains and uh, run on through the tunnel that went under the tracks. When you enter the building, I mean, you're definitely stepping back in time. And you look and you think, boy, if these walls could talk, what wonderful tales they, they would have to tell. The station itself is used Amtrak does rent a small portion that faces the track that is used as a waiting room. We here in, uh, in our area 
have the second largest Amish community in the state. The rail service is definitely uh, the Amish uh, mode of travel. We're also the closest to Penn State, so the Penn State students often use it. It's uh, actually a very uh, active uh, train station yet. We were the recipients of a grant that was applied through Downtown Lewistown, Inc. And we were able to obtain uh, 20 gallons of paint and also a $50 gift card for paint supplies. So over the past um, month or so, we have been working over at the train station. The uh, grant had uh, requested that it be done during the month of September, and that happens to be the same month that the United Way had their uh, day of caring. So we had a group of about 13 people at that time. I've been working with a group in Pittsburgh and also a group in Harrisburg, and we're trying to add uh, two more stops. Right now we have one westbound and one eastbound stop, and it's hard for the passengers to make connections if they're traveling beyond those two points. It's not an easy task, and we've been working on it for several years, but uh, we're getting closer, and hopefully the, uh, you know, in the future that we'll have those, those uh, two additional stops. I was born and raised in Lewistown. This area is so beautiful. I've definitely been kissed by Mother Nature, the mountains and the rivers. I feel as though the people here uh, were a bond. You know, it's, a, it's definitely a place where we'd want to call ho our hometown. There's more to come as we check out the natural beauty of bike trails in Mifflin County, the recent victory of the Babe Ruth team, and the town's restoration of a colorful landmark. But first, show your support for Lewistown and WPSU by making a pledge. Thanks. Welcome back to the WPSU studios. I'm Patrick Smith. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for Our Town, Lewistown, the 90th in the WPSU Our Town series. Right now, we are looking for a leader. We are looking for someone who loves Lewistown, who's lived there, who's enjoyed every moment of their time there, and who wants to be the first person to call and get these phones lit up to receive a copy of this show. Make a gift tonight of $75, and we can thank you with a DVD copy of the program you're watching. There you see it right on your screen. A gift of $120, we'll thank you with two copies of the show, one that you can keep for yourself, perhaps one that you want to give to someone as a friend. We know it's the holiday season. We know some of you might be thinking about giving this as a gift. So what we'll tell you tonight is if you make your gift on a credit card, but only if you make your gift on a credit card, we will have this out to you within the next 10 to 12 days. You will have it in your home in time for holiday gift giving. So call now. Make your gift of $75 on a credit card, your gift of $120 on a credit card. Get your DVD, and we'll get that out to you just as quickly as we can in time for the holidays. The number to call is 1-800-245-9779. Online, you can make your gift at WPSU.org. Happy to be joined in the studio by good friend and Lewistown resident, Kevin Conaway. That's right, Pat. And this, this, you know, I've worked on a number of these shows over the past 10 years, but this one's a special one to me. It's my own hometown. And so I'm super excited to share some of these stories with you tonight. And these folks back here, they're from Lewistown. Lewistown, and this is an opportunity for them to kind of see their stories come alive. It's always a special night here in the studio because your friends and neighbors call in and we get a chance to thank you on the air. We have a lot of fun here in the studio, and that's what we're encouraging you to do. Now, I'm coming up on my 25th class reunion, so I'm going to encourage the class of 1992 at Indian Valley High School to call in. I'd love to hear from, we're 250 of us, I'd love to hear from at least 25 of you. And I know Cole Cullen works here too, so we're definitely going to hear from him tonight. 1-800-245-9779 is the number to call, and I'm going to toss it on over to the man who made this magic possible, the editor of the program, Bill Wallace. Bill. I've been working on this show for almost as long as I've been here at the station, and you ask a parent which of their children is their favorite and they're always going to say, well, all of them. This is a really good show. I'm really, really proud of what we were able to accomplish with this show. And the people behind me work just as hard as I did on it. And there are some other people over in the uh, other side of the studio who are here to man the phones later who are just as proud of what they've accomplished as I am with what we've accomplished. And this whole show is about community involvement about people telling their own stories and about 
being proud of where you're from. And Kevin's a perfect example of that. You're going to hear from him later in the next segment about his family and their roots in Lewistown. It's, it's a great program, but we need your support to keep this sort of programming going. So give us a call, 1-800-245-9779, or go to your Google machine at WPSU.org and let us know that you support what we're accomplishing. Pat? Pat? The, the Google machine. I'd not heard that before. I don't know what I was thinking. Hey, for the record, just want to thank some folks who are here tonight. We have uh, answering the phones with us tonight students from the Mifflin County Academy of Science and Technology, as well as from Mifflin County High School. We have an assortment of some adults as well who are here kind of riding herd and helping us with the project tonight. But right now, the person that is most important, the person we most need to have contact with is you. If you're from Lewistown and this is your town and your story, we want you to call. Go to that phone right now at 1-800-245-9779. Go online at WPSU.org. But let's get all those phones busy. The folks who are here tonight have volunteered their time. They're volunteering their energy. It's part of their gift to this station. We ask that you honor their gift with one of your own and that you get a nice little takeaway. As Bill said, it's a great show. It's a fun show. It's a beautiful example of what a lot of townsfolk can do when they put their time and their talent and their heads together and decide that, hey, we're going to put on a show. Go to the phone right now, do your part, get a copy for yourself, maybe get a copy for someone else as well by calling 1-800-245-9779. More great stories to come, but we're going to take a few more calls before we head back into the show. And to tell you a little more about that show right now and maybe a little more about life in Lewistown, Kevin Conaway. Lewistownians, we have a great town, don't we? Yeah, so and, and what other place is going to celebrate your town except for your local public television station, WPSU? There simply doesn't exist anywhere else in central PA. No one else is going to dedicate an entire evening of programming to your town and the great stories from your town. And that's what I love about these Our Town projects. They're really documentaries on, on what the people in the town feel is important and what they love. And it, it's them telling their own story. The producers, the editors, they come into the town and they help people tell stories about them. Stories that would otherwise be lost. And so I kind of look at that as a pact with, with our community is by giving a contribution pledge to, uh, to your local public television station, you're creating seed money for that next our town project. I've traveled all over central Pennsylvania with this project. I've been to St. Mary's, I've been to Mount Union, I've been to Brockway, and this one's a super special one for me because it's our town, Lewistown. And what I'm encouraging you to do is say, you know, this is our 90th one. We've been doing this for 20 years. Other PBS models, uh, other PBS stations have picked up this model, and they're saying, hey, this is a great way to connect with your communities, and it's a great way for communities to connect with one another. This has been amazing for me to, to meet people that I, I've known for 20 years, to meet new people, and to to just interact in this community and that's what your gift that's what those dollars that you give create so I'm encouraging you to think about what that's worth to you and give us a call at 1-800-245-9779 and let me be the first to thank the first pledge of the evening which is Tom Storm of Lewistown Tom thank you for being the first pledge for our town Lewistown and we hope many more tonight give us a call at 1-800-245-9779 and those DVDs for a, a pledge in the amount of $75 uh, we'll send you one DVD if you can step up your giving to $120 we'll send you two DVDs DVDs. And let me say, grandparents, this is a great way to uh, pass these on to your grandchildren, the great stories of Lewistown. Uh, it, it, it's just a, it's a neat keepsake for the family, uh, and, and I encourage you to make a pledge tonight. Bill. The phones are busy. How many open phones do we have right now? Just one open phone. So call now. Be the first person to fill the phone bank this evening. We'd l and, and just in case you get a busy signal, call back in a couple of minutes or head to your computer at WPSU.org and you can make a pledge online. This is, Ke Kevin, Kevin has the personal stake in, in this program because he lives there. But I have to say that all of the shows that I've done over the past, Lord, how, how many years? Uh, <laughs> I, I make friends there, and I keep in touch with some people there. And a friend of mine says she watches this show to see what these towns are all about. And every time the show's over, she says, I want to go visit this place. That's the kind of stories that 
folks tell that, that prove that there's something there. There's something that means something to them. And it's not the way I edit this show or the way we ask the questions in the interviews. It's the fact that the people who are sitting down to do these interviews with us and shoot their own stories have a passion for where they live. And it comes through in these shows. And tonight is Lewistown's Night to Shine. And as you've seen already from the first, first segment, the, the drone footage at the beginning of the show is, is worth the price of the DVD, folks. It, it's just a way to see this town in a way that no one's ever had an opportunity to see it. And, and it's just stunning stuff. So it's the sort of thing we want to reinforce. It's the sort of thing we want to make sure that we have money from the pledges tonight to go out and do this again next year. So give us a call, 1-800-245-9779 or WPSU.org. Let us know you support what we're doing. Pat. All of us have heard the phrase, there's no place like home. And, and I think an Our Town show is a great way to prove that. There's no place like home, especially to the people who know it best, who know its history, who know its neighborhoods, who know the organizations and the friends and neighbors that belong to those organizations, the people who participate in the parades, the people who participate in the festivals, the people who make the charities run and who get things done. That's an R town. And tonight, that town is Lewistown. We want to keep these phones busy. We want to celebrate Lewistown. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'd like to set a goal for this evening. I'd like to think that there are enough people in Lewistown that love this town and want to help this station, want to celebrate this town and celebrate this station, that we can get 150 calls tonight. Some might say that's a stretch, but I think we can do it. Lewistown's a big place. It's a diverse place. It's an interesting place. If you love the place you live, then tonight you need to make a call. Make a gift to this station in support of this program and in support of all the future programming to come. You do that with your call right now at 1-800-245-9779. Make your gift of support. Make your gift right now. You can do it online as well at WPSU.org. Again, if you'd like a copy of the show, that can be yours for a contribution of $75. If you'd like two copies of the show, well, make a gift of $120. That's one copy for you, one copy perhaps for a friend or relative who used to live in Lewistown. Maybe they'd enjoy the show now that they've moved away. And again, as Kevin mentioned earlier, we are streaming this. I'll let Kevin tell you. Kevin, if someone wants to watch this on streaming, what sh where should they go? They should go to WPSU.org slash live. And, and we encourage that. And I know there are folks out there doing because I've got a few texts tonight saying that they're, they're watching. And we want to hear from them. 1-800-245-9779 is the number to call. In Lewistown, we do have a lot to celebrate, don't we? we? We have, coming up in the next block, we have a Cooper's Gap, this beautiful trail. And we're, we're going to go on a tour of that area. And, and, you know, I remember my dad used to take me fishing in Cooper's Gap. And so this, this really brings back a lot of good memories. Uh, we're going to hear about that 13-year-old all-star team. I mean, how? what more can we ask for? That's something we definitely want to celebrate. Uh, we're going to visit Light in the Darkness. Uh, it, it's a beautiful thing this time of year, and, and you can actually go see it now. And that's what I love about the Our Town series. You learn about things you can go, you can learn about throughout central Pennsylvania. Uh, we're going to see that Embassy Theater, that beautiful marquee. It's just a gorgeous uh, focal point of Lewistown. And, and we're going to learn about the Community Band, which is just a gorgeous group that, that they play this gorgeous music around community celebrations, and it's always great to gather around them. Some really great people, some great people that I know are part of that band, and we're going to hear all about them tonight. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about an area that my dad grew up in, Juniata Terrace, and, and what makes that company town unique. It's one of the only ones that exist in Pennsylvania still today. So I, I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. 1-800-245-9779 is the number to call to create those seed dollars that creates great storytelling, that creates documentaries, that creates stories about your central Pennsylvania community, our town, Lewistown. And I'd love to hear this, you know, this is our town, Lewistown, but it's also the entire Mifflin County area. We, we have Big Valley featured in here. We have Reedsville featured in here. We have 522 featured in here. We have uh, Lockport and Strode's Mills featured in here. So we want to hear from all of you tonight. Give us a call, 1-800-245-9779. And I particularly want to hear from, night, from the 1992 class of Indian Valley High School, the first class to go through all four years. Uh, there's, I, that was my class, Cole Cullen's class. I want to hear from them. I want to hear from 
Chief Logan, where I know Jeff Hughes went. I want to hear from uh, Lewistown, where my, where my parents and, and, and aunts and uncles went. I want to hear from the Mifflin County Huskies, uh, where, where my daughter's going. Give us a call, 1-800-245-9779. We want to thank you personally, and that's what we're all about. And, you know, Mayor Bargo's back here, Deb Bargo. What mayor would come in and, and answer phones and, and chat? Uh, you know, we, we have a great group of people in Lewistown, really people that we should be proud of. We have a great community, and that's what we're celebrating tonight. 1-800-245-9779. Won't you be the next to give us a call? Bill. The phones are ringing, and we have some people to thank. First person I'd like to thank is Bob Bartlett uh, from Lewistown, a member of the Lewistown Fire Department. And Pat a moment ago said that he was going out on a limb. I'm going to go out on a limb and thank Natalie Xanthopoulos from Lewistown. And I really, really hope I got that right. <laughs> My apologies if I didn't. Uh, Donald Snyder from Burnham with a pledge of support. And David Knox from Lewistown who is dedicating his contribution to the Knox girls who drove the mule on the restored Pennsylvania Canal. Now, that's a, that's a picture I'd like to see. Pat. Uh, I also have some folks I'd like to thank. We have a couple minutes before we're going back into the show. So remember, now is the time to call. You want to call while I'm on the screen, not while the show is running. Call now, 1-800-245-9779. Make a gift of $75. Receive a copy, a DVD copy of the show you're watching. A gift of $120. We'll send you two copies of the show you're watching. And again, remember, if you'd like to have those by the holidays, you do need to make your gift on a credit card. That will enable us to process your gift faster and get those thank yous in the mail to you as quickly as we possibly can. Before I forget, David Borman of Lewistown, thank you so much for your gift of support. It was very nice to hear from you. I'd also like to thank Wilfred Smith from Burnham. Thank you so much for your gift of support. And I'd like to thank Patrick Patterson of Belleville. Thank you so much for your call tonight. We'd like the opportunity to thank you next. We've, we've set kind of an audacious goal tonight. We'd like to have 150 calls. It begins with your call at 1-800-245-9779. Or if you prefer to make your gift online, use our secure server at wpsu.org. Either method is fine with us, but we ask that you do your part to support a great community story, a great community show, but also to support your community public broadcasting station. Remember, commercial stations come to your town when there's been a crime. Commercial stations send their news team to your town when there's been a terrible accident. Public television comes to your town so that you can tell the stories of your town and the people who live there. Do your part to support that right now. 1-800-245-9779. Kevin, take this break home. Yeah, Pat, we have a number of thank yous. We want to thank Sherry Hughes, who called in. Her bro She's calling in in honor of her brother, Jeff, and her dad, Al Hughes, who both worked on the show. And Jeff's been a, a, the executive producer of this show for, a, a, he's been here for 25, more than 25 plus years, but he's been here working on this show for the last 20. So, so Sherry Hughes, thank you for your pledge of support for our town, Lewistown. Uh, we have an anonymous pledge. We want to thank you just the same. Uh, we want to thank Sharon Mahoney of Honey Creek Road, giving us a call in from Reedsville. Honey Creek, that's a creek that runs through Reedsville that we're very proud of. Michelle's uh, really good breakfast at OIP are there. We want to thank Robert Ingram of Lewistown for giving us a call. And I see one name that's very familiar to me, Mary L. Sigler calling in. Mary Lou Sigler, who was my assistant principal, who was in charge of the National Honor Society when I was in school. Great lady, and I'm really glad to hear from her tonight. In fact, the National Honor Society came here to answer phones when I was back in, I think, 10th grade. So, Mary Lou, great to hear from you tonight. 1-800-245-9779. Yeah, I was working pledge even then, Pat. Yep, absolutely. 1-800-245-9779 is the number to call. The volunteers from Lewistown will be back here this whole time uh, while, while the show is going on. We have a really great story from Cooper's Gap coming up that, that takes you on a tour of, of those beautiful mountains. So I want to encourage you to do that. Again, that number to call, 1-800-245-9779, or log on to wpsu.org slash live. I hope to hear from many friends and family tonight, and I hope you enjoy Our Town, Lewistown. You can also make your contribution at WPSU.org. Click on Donate at the top of the page. It's always available and easy to use. Thanks. I'm Cole Cullen, and my story is about mountain biking in the area. 
Cooper's Gap is an area located about five or six miles from Lewistown that is, in the mountain biking community, thought to be one of the best places to ride in the state of Pennsylvania. It's really nice because I can get in my car and drive for five minutes and then I'm riding these awesome trails, which is great. Life is stressful with work and family and it's just good to get out in the woods and ride my bike and I, I feel like a kid when I'm on my bike. I love the smell of the woods, I love the silence. That's what I do to get away from the stress of life. I can't tell you how many miles of trails there are but there are courses in Cooper's Gap that are 20 or 30 miles. You can ride all day and not duplicate any part of the track. The trails are nice because there's difficult trails and simple trails, so you don't have to be an expert to enjoy the trails. Almost any skill level can ride the trails. And you don't always have to ride bikes either. My family and I go hiking there quite a bit, especially through the winter, because they're so easy to get to and beautiful to hike. The trails themselves are really well maintained. There's a group in the area called Friends of Cooper's Gap that takes care of them. They keep the trails clean. If there's a downed tree, someone will come up with a chainsaw and cut a hole in the tree so you can keep riding. Every now and then they build fun obstacles that you can ride, which is pretty cool. There's nice parking areas, and one of the parking areas even has a map so you can see where you are and where you can go. I was actually living in the area four or five years before I discovered the trails and they were literally five minutes from my home. And I just had a friend who likes to mountain bike and he told me about them and voila, they are in my backyard practically. I've loved riding bikes all my life. And as I grew up, when I was growing up, I lived on the edge of the woods so I was always riding on trails as a kid. I started mountain biking when I was in college because I went to Penn State and there were trails in that area as well. And I never really stopped. And it was nice when I moved back to the area, it was nice to find that I had some of the greatest trails in the state just a few miles from my home, and that's Cooper's Gap. I grew up in this area and left the area for about six years, and we started our family out of the area. And as the kids got older and life got busy, we decided we wanted to come back where it was quiet and peaceful and life runs a little slower here, and it's just, it's just a great place to get away from the craziness of life. My name is Brandon Souders, and my story is about how we went to the World Series for our 13-year-old All-Star team. I play center field and first base for the Mifflin County 13-year-old All-Star team. I've been playing baseball since I was about four or five. We've been playing together since we were about eight or nine, all of us, and we used to be big rivals in, like, Little League. We have Casey Connor. He's about 6'3 on our team. He's probably the biggest kid on our team. Uh, he's a pitcher, and he's our first baseman. Colby Bodorf was one of our great pitchers, uh, helped us up throughout the tournaments. And Brian Yeather, he was our home run hitter, and he helped us throughout the tournaments too. Scott Regal, uh, he was our manager, and he helped us go throughout. He just told us to have fun throughout the whole thing. We played 18 games, we went 17 and 1 throughout the tournament. Uh, in districts, we beat Perry County uh, 2 0, and in states, we went 5 0 winning over Franklin Township, Philadelphia teams, and Pittsburgh teams. In New York, we won over some New Jersey teams and New York teams there. And in the World Series, we played teams from Hawaii, North Dakota, Connecticut, and like all around the world. We have friends all around the country now, so it was a great time over there. When we were in the World Series, we were losing three to one. We came back and won it five to three, so it was a really close game. It was just one of the most amazing things ever. Not, like Winning it was just great for all of us. We just knew that we couldn't lose. Like All the community and all of their support and help, we knew that we had to bring it back for them. We had a two-hour fire truck ride from Walmart to Milroy. We had like a ceremony there, and we thanked the community and our parents and everything there. Seeing all of our neighbors was just really great. It, like They all supported us, and they all thanked us, and it was just great. As soon as everybody got back to school, we had our lockers decorated and everything, and everybody was just thanking us and stuff. Winning the series was just amazing, and it was just a great experience for all of us. My name is Darla Rickert, and my story is about shining light through the darkness. 
Shining Light Through the Darkness, ultimately is a whole bunch of light. And it started as a mission outreach hosted through the Freedom Avenue United Methodist Church. This is our 10th season this year, and we're working on growing the lights. We have entertainment, uh, festivities, horse and wagon rides, uh, just a number of things um, where we've grown from 150 volunteers and 1,500 people down to see the lights our very first season to this past season, the ninth, we had over 300 volunteers and over 17,000 people down. It actually started as an idea for my Senior Girl Scout Gold Award. When I came back from Iraq uh, in 2006, my church was talking about mission outreach and what could we do in our community. And I said, well, hey, what about this? My favorite part is seeing the families. The kids come down, they get to run around, they get to see the lights, they can touch the displays. We have hot dogs and hot chocolate there in the sweet shop. We have entertainment nightly. There's a train room, so they can go in and watch the trains and see all the little mini village people. And then they can enjoy just walking around and just enjoying the holiday season. So this award we received this year, it's the Juniata River Valley Chamber of Commerce Volunteer Award. And we received it for all the volunteer work and all the volunteer efforts that Shining Light Through the Darkness has done. So what's great about this town is that we come together. Um, it's not just older generation, younger generation. It's a whole mixture, especially through our project. You have every age come down and help set up the lights. We've had an engagement down at the park. We had people come down to take their wedding pictures down there at the lights. It's their holiday. It's their favorite time of the year. Through Shining Light Through the Darkness, we have people from all over coming home for the holidays. They can come down there, they can walk through and enjoy all the festivities. And so it makes it a great place, it makes it a great place to live. My name is Paul Fegley. I am here about the historic Embassy Theater here in Lewistown. The Embassy Theater is one of the most iconic buildings in Lewistown. Uh, it was one of several theaters that were here during the heyday from about 1927 into the 50s, but it was the grand dame of theaters. It was more ornate and more luxurious than any of the others. The embassy was designed much like the Broadway picture palaces in New York City. In fact, it copied many detailed features from the big theaters, but scaled them down to a small town size. The marquee has a thousand lights on it. When it was put in, it was said to be the most elaborate theater marquee between Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. So it was a very grand theater for its day in Lewistown. Starting in the 1950s, theater started closing through that time. The embassy was one that managed to survive to 1981 when it finally went dark. The Friends of the Embassy formed about 25 years ago and rescued the theater from demolition. Uh, we didn't want to see it become another parking lot and just an old faded memory. The idea is to have a functioning historic theater with movies, stage productions, and concerts in it. We want to bring it back to life. It's expensive to do that. It takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of effort. We restored the facade of the theater, uh, recreated the marquee of a thousand lights. We've also had projects to fix the entire outside of the building so it's now weatherproof. We are now ready to move inside and start working on it. A couple years ago, we were able to hire the finest historic theater architect firm in the country to do a concept plan for us. We're going to expand it for stage productions, concerts, children's theater. We're also going to add an annex to it to support additional functions, have a larger lobby and concession area. So it'll be more of a multiple-use theater facility. We're really at that point now where the plans are done, and what we need now is both the money and the help. We can even phase it if we need to. We don't need to have all of that money all at one time. The theater is going to be 100 years old in 11 years, and I think it would be great to have this theater up and running and being a vibrant part of Lewistown at that time, or even before that. Lewistown has a lot of history to it, and a lot to be proud of. Historic buildings are really a tie to the past. It's understandable you can't save everything, 
But you pick out those things that are important in the community, and that's what you save. And the embassy is worthy of that. My name is Joyce Ann Hutchinson, and I'm here to talk about the Lewistown Community Band. Well, the band was originated in the Lewistown Elks building, and so we were the Lewistown Elks Band for quite a while. And then we became the Lewistown Community Band. We have about 50 playing members now. We've grown a lot in the 25 years that we've been in existence. We have some high school students, I'll say from 15 to 16 on up to uh, retired folks, so we have all ages. One of our band members, Frida Richard, is sort of a historian, and I know that she has done some things for the community band here. Every town had a band. McVeigh Town, to Allensville, to Alpharetta, Milroy, Yeagertown. Most organizations had a band too, Standard Steel, Orphan's Home, Fireman's Group. 1923, a man by the name of Palmer Mitchell came to Lewistown and started the Lewistown High School Band. This grew from about 14, 15 players to a band of 60, 70 players. Our athletic field in Lewistown is named Mitchell Field. And the way I understand, it's the only athletic field that's named after a band director. We play about 12 to 15 uh, different concerts through the season. We play for church festivals. We play for fundraisers. One of them that we play that's my favorite is the Christmas concert that we do for the Ice Festival, and we actually play it right here in this, in this room, in the courthouse. And another one that's a really big concert for us is the Let Freedom Ring concert that we play in front of the Embassy Theater. We play myriad of things, marches, blues, gospel, whatever, you know, big pieces, victory at sea things like that. And uh, if anybody wants us, they call. If they have a special event, uh, maybe we do a one-time-a-year thing as opposed to some of the places that we do every year. That's better. Let's do our time. I've lived in Lewistown all my life. I guess I, I just love the small town people and being here and knowing everyone and, and being part of the small town family. And I love being part of the Lewistown Community Band. And I'm proud to be from Lewistown and proud to be part of the band. My name is Kevin Conaway, and I'm here to talk about the American Viscos Corporation, Juniata Terrace, the company town that was built up around it, and how my family's been a part of that from the beginning for five generations. My great-grandfather, Edward Morgan, uh, was a first-generation American, and when the coal mining industry um, essentially dried up in Westmoreland County, he brought his family along with him and uh, started working in the spinning department at the American Viscos Company. My grandmother was 16 and my uh, aunt was 17 at the time. They were some of the first women to work in the factory, which had started in 1925. And why the factory was so important to the town, it was producing rayon. It was one of the first companies to produce rayon and a very important fabric at the time because everything was natural before that, included cotton and linen. He was known uh, mostly for playing the piano, and it's said that along the streets of the block that he lived on, people would gather on their front porches in the evening to listen to him play the piano. So the great thing about uh, Juniata Terrace is it, it had everything that a community would need. It had a school, it had a church, it had a uh, grocery store, it had a, a pharmacy and a, a soda fountain, uh, and it had a beauty shop. In the 1940s, my grandmother returned to the hill after marrying my grandfather, William Conaway. He became a mechanic in the engineering department. He was a well-loved man, and, and, and I'm very proud of him. My grandfather was known best for being very active in the community. He was a part of the Playground Association. Often, the kids would come knocking at the door to ask for him to come out and play. My Aunt Sharon Conaway talks a little bit about what it was like to grow up on the hill in the 1950s. All of us kids, Art and Sam and Bill, all of us, never hesitated to bring any of our friends into the house. They always welcomed the mom and dad. And they would sit and they would actually play games with us if we were playing games. 
During the 1940s, the American Viscose Corporation was really important to the war effort. Uh, the rayon that they made was able to uh, help the tires last longer, and really, they were a part of winning World War II. Both of my grandparents were very proud that all of their children served in the military. So when those boys returned home, all of them started working at the American Viscose Company. My dad, Art, uh, my uh, uncle, Sam, and my uncle, Foster, as well as my uncle, Bill. My dad took great pride in being a part of the union and being a committee man and representing people and helping them help themselves. One period, he was out of work for eight months for doing that. It wasn't a happy time for our family, but it was a proud time because in the end, he was able to help those folks. Junietta Terrace was a working class neighborhood, but everyone that came from there was really proud to be a part of that community. Uh, here's my Uncle Bill with more on that. You know, we're proud to be Hill people, Visco people, Junietta Terrace people, whatever you want to say it, uh, Visco Hill. Yeah, the people from right here are, that come off of this, if they are proud that, that they have been a part of this community. Much of the American Viscose Corporation was wiped out in the 1970s um, due to uh, Hurricane Agnes and the floods. The polyester part of the plant survived, and that was where my dad worked. My uncle at that time lost his job. He then uh, moved on to work for the borough, the Juniata Terrace, this company town that, that he had grown up in. While he was there, there was a, a fire on the Juniata Terrace in 2014 that they almost lost an entire row of houses. And he always remarks about how the community came together and really supported uh, them. And, and that's just something that I, I've seen many times on Juniata Terrace. When my grandfather passed away, everyone on the hill gave, a, gave an amount to her. And it's just, it's one house after another gave an amount. And they did that for everyone. It was, it was a community that cared about each other. You know, I, I'm proud to come from Lewistown. Like, my family is proud to come from Juniata Terrace. Uh, when, when we decided to raise our daughter, it was very important for us to come back here and let her have the same experiences that um, we had growing up uh, and being with our family, being with our grandparents, being surrounded by a great community. So, yes, I, I'm very proud to be from Lewistown. We'll be right back with stories about a library that serves all ages, Area churches that combine to help local kids. And young people who use their talents to help others. But first, show your support for Lewistown and WPSU by making a pledge. Thanks. So you might be having a case of deja vu. That was me in that last segment. And I've worked for WPSU for 10 years, and I've had the pleasure of going to many towns across central Pennsylvania. But I will say this one was incredibly special for me. And, and you know, being on the other side of it for many years, I never realized what it meant to a community when you go in and visit with them. It, it, it allows you the opportunity to tell their stories, to, for neighbors to connect, for, um, for families to connect. For you know, One of the things for me is I got to spend some time with my aunt Sharon and Uncle Bill and I got to research my family and I got to hear stories that I had never heard before and, and it was a beautiful time to connect and, and that's what um, community is all about and that's what this great Our Town Lewis Town is all about. We really do have a special community that I'm very proud of uh, and, and coming from Juniata Terrace, coming from that working class community, uh, we have a lot to celebrate not only in Lewistown but in central Pennsylvania. Uh, and so let me say this, we also have a really great PBS station to celebrate. Um, we're very lucky that we have WPSU here and that they are a local program. That they're dedicating an entire evening to celebrating your town, our town, Lewistown. And so what I'm asking you to do tonight is think about a dollar value on that and think about that what pledge you make creates seed money for the next town. And you know, we visited Lewistown twice, but the first time we did a lot of other stories. And this time, I was able to be a part of it. Cole Collin was able to be a part of it. Jeff Hughes, one of the executive producers here, was able to be a part of it. We were able to tell stories that weren't told the first time. And, 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 and really, it's a wonderful outreach marketing uh, a way for PBS to connect with the communities it serves. And it's so special that other PBS stations have figured out a way to do it. But your pledge dollar supports this great programming. And I'm encouraging you to say, I value this. 
I want to see programs about my town by calling 1-800-245-9779. And I encourage you to make a pledge if you can. Any amount, we'll be glad to say thank you tonight. But if you can step up your giving just a little bit, that's my daughter, Emily Grace, right there. She has a piece coming up a little bit later. 1-800-245-9779 uh, is the number to call. Uh, and, and I encourage you to, to think about calling in to step up your giving to $75. We can send you a DVD. There's the Cullen family, Carrie and Riley right there. Um, it, we can give you a gift of $75. If you can give a gift of $75, we'll be glad to send you one DVD. If you can step up your giving a little bit more to $120, we'll be able to send you two DVDs. And this is a great thing. I, I know I'm planning to pick a few up and share with family members. Um, it's a great way to, to really preserve these stories for generations to come. And the great thing is these live uh, at your local public television station. What a great archive. In the same way that PBS does this, NPR does this with these wonderful oral, oral histories. I, I just can't tell you what a wonderful priceless value this is for me and I'm asking you to think about it tonight and put a price on it and put a price on it and put a pledge amount that you think is important and shares what this is all about. And our membership director here, Pat Smith, is going to tell you a little bit more about all this. Indeed, as we talked about before, the Our Town series was developed here at WPSU. It is now something that a number of our staff members have taught to staff at other stations. They are using it in their portions of the country, and as popular as it has been here within our broadcast footprint, it is becoming that popular in other regions as well. Tonight, we're looking at Our Town Lewistown. This is the 90th show in the Our Town series. It's a great show, it's a great town, and there are many, many more great stories to come. Before we get back to the show, there are some people we'd like to thank, however. I'd like to thank Gen <clears throat> excuse me, Genevieve McCardle, I think it's McCardle, of Lewistown, who gave a shout-out to Darla, creator of uh, Shining Light Through the Darkness. I'd also like to thank um, Joyce Ann Hutchinson. Thank you, Joyce, for calling. We're very appreciative of your call. Uh, very much want to thank Virginia Westover of Reedsville. Thank you. That I believe that's maybe our fourth or fifth call from Reedsville tonight, so we're great to hear from you. I'd also like to thank John and Linda Price of Lewistown, and they say they want to give a big shout-out to all the residents of Lewistown, and certainly everybody who helped make this show and who is helping support this station tonight. Also, a uh, big thank you to our friend Teresa um, Dybach, Dybach, excuse me, 40-year um, resident, longtime English teacher at Lewistown High School. Hello to all my former students. So great to hear from you, Teresa. We really appreciate your call. We would like to thank you as well. We appreciate your call just as soon as you dial 1-800-245-9779 or make your gift online at WPSU.org. Again, remember, any gift in any amount helps support this station, helps support local broadcasting just like you're watching tonight. But if you'd like a copy of the show, bring your credit card to the phone and make a gift of $75. If you'd like two copies of the show, maybe one for yourself, maybe one to give away as a gift, again, bring that credit card to the phone and make a gift of $120. And we will thank you with two copies of Our Town, Lewistown. So far tonight, we've had about 35 to 40 calls. We'll get an update on that as we move through the rest of the evening. But we've got a pretty ambitious goal. We'd love to have 150 call calls tonight, and that means we need to keep all these phones ringing. So you saw someone back there right now who didn't have a phone call. It's up to you. Make their, their, their donation of time and energy a good one right now with your call at 1-800-245-9779. And I think my friend Bill has some additional folks to thank as well. Yes, I do. I would like to thank Donna Treister from Lewistown. Uh, she and her husband, David, uh, sent in a pledge of support. David was born in Lewistown, she says. I'd like to thank Anonymous from Lewistown. We hear from Anonymous quite often. We appreciate the, his and her phone calls. Uh, Doris Scott from Lewistown with a pledge of support. W. Janie Carolus, I believe I'm pronouncing that cor correctly, from Lewistown. Uh, I'm getting all the Lewistown calls and... You're getting all of the calls from Reedsville. Uh, and a web pledge from Jeffrey Gum of Lewistown. Uh, take advantage of the, uh, of the Internet. Uh, give us a call uh, at 1-800-245-9779 or find us at WPSU.org. And if you're watching us on TV, we appreciate the fact that you're here in the studio with us. If you're watching us by streaming us live, we appreciate that you're doing that. And we hope that people from far and wide are watching us on the Internet this evening. Uh, we've gotten calls in past shows from 
all over the country. Uh, I'm trying to remember earlier in the season, I think we were trying to get all four corners. Uh, we had somebody from Florida call in, somebody from Washington State call in, somebody from Maine called in, and I think we were only missing Arizona when it was all said and done. So, if you happen to know somebody who's uh, in Hawaii this week, call them, let them know that we're streaming, and we'd love to hear from them. Kevin, do you have some other people to thank? I have a lot of folks to thank, but I, I do want to mention coming up in the next break, one of the things that really struck me about this program as, as we watched it at the premiere is Lewistown is full of really great community organizations. Um, we're going to hear from the Kiwanis, we're going to hear from the Lumina Center, we're going to hear from Mifflin County Middle School's Husky Helpers, and they just wrapped up their band concert a little bit. My daughter arrived just a few minutes ago. We're going to hear about New Visions, and we're going to hear about Rotary. And Lewistown just has a lot of great uh, organizations like that. We're also going to hear about an anti-bullying campaign with a buddy bench. And I've seen this bench, and I think this is about one of the coolest things that we've ever come up with, and it started right here in Lewistown. 1-800-245-9779 is the number to call. Uh, and we want to thank you tonight on air. And I want to thank Andrea Patterson, class of 92, for giving me a phone call. You are now my current favorite classmate. Don't tell Cole. Um, but, no, it's great, great to hear from you, Andrea. Uh, and, and, and your married name calling in from Enola. Provenzano, I, I think that's it. Andrea, we always had a lot of fun on your book, and it's glad, great to hear from you tonight. We'd love to hear from some other classmates, but Andrea is definitely my favorite at the moment. Um, we, we'd, love, uh, we'd love to thank Patricia Bumgardner of Lewistown for giving us a call. We want to thank Robert Long of Lewistown. Riley Cullen, he has a story coming up in a little bit about the band and, and some really neat things that they did this year. Uh, we want to thank Peter um, Kyle Orks of Lewistown for giving us a call. Peter, thank you. Um, and, and I want to challenge challenge, uh, you know, we want to hear from all these great little towns around Lewistown. I grew up in the 522 area, you know, uh, Maitland, Painterville, Alpharetta, McClure, uh, heading, heading up 22, you know, we want to hear from Strode's Mills, we want to hear from McVeigh Town, we want to hear from Matawana, you know, heading up the Big Valley where Cole's from, uh, we want to hear from Belleville and Allensville, uh, so give us a call, 1-800-245-9779 is the number to call. We also want to thank Willa and Ross Adams, and there are the Cullens right there answering phones, Big Valley's uh, Big Valley Zone. And I also want to thank Forrest Fisher who called in. And Forrest is a, a great resource for the county. He helped me do a lot of the research for my piece. You saw Forrest earlier there, president of the Mifflin County Historical Society. Really a treasure for Mifflin County. Uh, it comes up with a lot of the great books that we have on the area and really a great guy. And so we were glad to hear from Forrest. 1-800-245-9779. What a wonderful community we have, our town, Lewistown. And we encourage you to give us a call of pledge of support to celebrate your town and, and prep the next one and who knows where that might be. Pat. Hey, I'd like to give a big shout out to Sharon Smith and her husband Dave. They made a call of support to the station. My aunt and uncle. Your aunt, oh, Kevin's aunt and uncle, but we like you anyway. Um, <laughs> we'd like to give a big shout out to uh, William and Faye Heading of Lewistown. Thank you so much for your call. Great to have you with us tonight. Uh, Joe Baker of Lewistown, thank you so much for your call. We really appreciate your support and we hope you're enjoying the show. Um, and now they're all starting to stick together. Sorry about that. Um, Sue Burkholder of Jaegertown, Pennsylvania, who says, Hey, making my gift, doing my part, and issuing a challenge to all the Burkholders in the Mifflin County area, a challenge to you all to donate. Well, as I think that's a great idea. Sue, thank you very much for your gift and for your challenge. So to all you Burkholders who have just decided you're going to accept Sue's challenge, the number to call is one 800 Two four five nine seven seven nine, or go online to wpsu.org. But go now. We have a goal of 150 calls for this show. We'd like to hear from more than that, but <clears throat> let's get that 150 first. And that happens with your call right now. Again, that number, 1-800-245-9779. I, I think we still have two. It's kind of busy, but I think we still have two lines open. So go to the phone right now. Make your call. Get in your gift of support to the station. Be sure to say thank you to your phone volunteer who's giving of their time tonight. And we'll be back to the show in just a few minutes with a lot more great stories. But right now, make your call while we're here in the studio so you don't miss any of the show later. 1-800-245-9779. 9779. Bill Wallace, over to you. We have about three phones, I believe, that are available right now, and, and we'd like to be able to fill them up uh, while we're waiting for those phones to fill. I'll thank a few more people as well. Uh, I want to thank John uh, Schultz from State College, who grew up on the terrace. Kevin? Oh, great. Uh, and a shout out to Mayor Debbie Bargo. Uh, Robin Merrick from Burnham. 
and R.B. Powell, Bridget Powell, Powell, uh, R.B. and Bridget from the usual, the unusual suspects, Bluegrass Band, <laughs> and Paul Coldren from McClure, who called in with a pledge of support, and Eleanor Mash from Duncansville. One of the things that's really cool about this program is people who don't live in the town that we are featuring will call in to buy a copy of this show and I just think it's so cool that somebody in Warren thinks that Lewistown is special enough that they'd like to support what we're doing by buying a copy of this show so that they can watch it and learn a little bit more about some of the people who live far away but have the same sort of love for their town that they do and that's really what this show is all about this is this is community involvement this is these folks telling us that they think things are pretty special where they live and they care enough to make the effort to come in and sit down and do an interview with us and gather pictures shoot video try and find all the things that they need to tell the story that they think is important to them I've spent a lot of time here at this station and years before that doing television in other ways and standing in front of the camera is a really, really new thing for me. So I understand how hard it is for everybody else to make the effort to sit down in front of the camera and try and sound like they make sense. So in that interest, I'll send it back over to Kevin because he's better at that than I am. I wouldn't say that, Mr. Wallace, but Juniata Terrace is represented tonight. We heard from Daryl Miller uh, of uh, Lewistown, Pennsylvania. He called in. He met his wife on Visco Hill 64 years ago uh, in honor of his wife, Ruth Gears Miller. A lot of great folks on that hill, so we're, we're glad to hear from and We'd love to hear from more of you tonight. 1-800-245-9779 is the number to call. Uh, we also want to thank William Edward, who gave us a call from Lewistown. William Edward, thank you for calling in tonight. 1-800-245-9779 is the number of call. And you might notice, uh, there's my daughter, Emily. Uh, she is part of a really great theater camp uh, that um, Julie Euphema and Phyllis Johnson have been doing with the Stone Arch Players, and there's a piece coming up on that soon. And I have my Evolution Arts pin on tonight. Um, that's a great center that's just opened in, 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 uh, in downtown Lewistown. It's in the old Glick Shoe store uh, on the square. Uh, and, and it's encouraging kids to come in. They opened their doors for the first time for us to do the Art Town program. Uh, and then they uh, they just did a really great thing with the Ice Festival. And it's, it's striking to me that here's this area where students can go in and they can hang out and they can play the guitar and they can do photography and they can do theater. It's really what WPSU, it's what PBS is all about. It's about culture. It's about the world. Uh, and so what I'm asking you to do tonight, in the same way I'm supporting the Evolution Arts Center and Julie, great, great work, and Phyllis, uh, I want, I'm asking you to think about pledging to Our Town Lewistown to celebrate these great organizations, these great community organizations that I got to say, I didn't know all were happening in Lewistown. I ask you to give us a call at 1-800-245-9779. We're going to hear in the next break about the Lumina Center. We're going to hear about the Kiwanis, the Rotary, lots of great things happening in that town, new visions, uh, things that can make us all proud. And that's what we're really about tonight. We're celebrating our town, Lewistown. And I'm asking you, if you can, to think about what is a dollar value that you might put on that to say, I, I, I want to create seed money for other communities to celebrate. This has been really special tonight to watch my program, uh, to watch my town dedicated on a local PBS station. No one else is going to do that. And, and it's your public television station. And by you calling tonight, you are saying, I value this. I think this is pretty darn special. And so that's what I'm asking you to do. Give us a call at 1-800-245-9779. Pat. A few people to thank while I have a moment. I'd like to thank Stephen and Candace Springman, um, who uh, a note here saying that they are former, or want, well, either Candace or Stephen, I'm not sure which, former Kid Connection chairperson. Um, Okay, great organization. Uh, a thank you to Terry Smith of Reedsville, someone else from Reedsville. Great to hear from you. Um, also, a thank you to our very own Jeff Hughes, who made a contribution in support of the station and the program tonight. We ask now that you follow their lead. The number to call is 1-800-245-9779. You can also make your gift online at wpsu.org. Either method is fine with us. Any gift that you care to give is fine with us. However, if you do want to receive a copy of the show as a DVD, well, that requires a $75 gift on your behalf. 
And if you'd like a two, if, excuse me, if you'd like two copies of the show on DVD, that's uh, our way of saying thank you for a gift of one hundred and twenty dollars. Again, the number to call is one eight hundred two four five nine seven seven nine. And frankly, I'd make that call right now because it just got a little quiet. And that says to me that we probably have about four lines open, but we still have about three minutes left. So you want to call now because you don't want to really be paying a lot of attention to me and to Bill and to Kevin. Sure, we're dazzlingly brilliant and startlingly handsome, but what you really want to do is you want to be able to watch the show as soon as we go back. So call now at 1-800-245-9779, online at wpsu.org. Bill. I have a couple of other people to thank, and, and you reminded me of something when, when you mentioned the two DVDs for $120. We have a story coming up in the third block uh, from Molly. Um, yes, yeah, sorry, I just did that. Uh, Molly Kinney uh, from the, uh, the Lewistown Library. And we try and encourage folks that if they really only need one DVD, perhaps they could purchase that second one and drop it off at the library so that people can check it out if maybe they don't have the opportunity to afford what we're asking in a, in a pledge for, for the show. Uh, that way they have a chance to share it with others. Uh, people generally find that a, a worthwhile thing to do. In the interim, I'm going to read a couple more thank yous for some people. Uh, Deb Palou from Lewistown called in with a pledge of support. Uh, Barb and uh, Dwayne Herrer. Uh, Barb did a story earlier uh, uh, from the South Hills School of Technology on Goose Day. And you can't do a story on Lewistown without talking about Goose Day. And she wants to remind us that she's from, she's the director of the South Hills School of Business and Technology, Lewistown campus. Uh, got a call from Ron Sheets, uh, who is from Jaegertown. And we thank him for his pledge. And Sarah Trago from Lewistown. And Kevin Kodish from Lewistown all called in to support this programming. Most of them called in with the idea of having one of those DVDs when, when this is all said and done. And, and we appreciate that they're willing to support what we're doing in the hopes that we can keep doing it next year with other shows in other towns. So I'll throw it back to Kevin. Bill, one of the things, we have about a minute before we turn, uh, and I want to share, uh, you know, one of the things that I got to enjoy with this program is I spent some time in my daughter's school, and I got to see a couple of her advisors for the Mifflin County um, uh, Husky Helpers. And let me just say, Amy Bergstrom and um, and and, uh, and Norma, um, but Norma, I'm blanking on your last name right now. Sorry about that. Um, Norma is doing a great job, and they're really refreshing. Uh, Norma O'Brien, thank you. Norma O'Brien, and they're doing some great work in that school. They're teaching the kids to tutor. They've knit 10 hats for children, um, and they have 20 students that are going to nursing homes, and it's really great stuff. And you don't see this anywhere else except in a great town like our town, Lewistown, showcased on your local public television station. And here's more. You can also make your contribution at WPSU.org. Click on Donate at the top of the page. It's always available and easy to use. Thanks. I'm Molly Kinney, and my story is about the Mifflin County Library. The Mifflin County Library will soon celebrate its 175th continuous year of service in 2017. We started out as an apprentices library. There was a big apprentice guild here in the Lewistown area, and the wives of the masters started a library and from there, we moved into a subscription library for members. And then finally, we became a, a free public library for the residents of the county. We have offered womb to tomb service to the residents of Mifflin County and the surrounding counties. One of our big focuses is with early literacy. We do story time for babies. We set a good foundation for children. Oh, 
so that when they enter elementary school and become independent readers, they'll visit us for their pleasure reading as well as for their school assignments. When our current library was built, we needed a way to quickly tell people how to get to the children's department. The children's library then created a rainbow. Well, the building needed painted, and so we created a rainbow of hand prints. 762 hand prints now make the rainbow from the top of the stairs to the bottom, down the hallway, around the corner, and into the children's department. It was a way to involve the community in a way to say, this is your library. The public libraries in America are one of the best tax values for its citizens because we seem to do something with nothing all the time. There really is something for everyone. When I think about Mifflin County, I think about the beauty of the area. I like the peace of the, the living here. I think the faith-based organizations are a real strength in this community. And the service clubs are some of the most generous giving groups I've ever had the privilege of knowing. My name is Al Hughes, and I'm here to talk about uh, the United Way Day of Care and Breakfast served by the Qantas Club of Lewistown. The uh, breakfast is at Kish Park out, out in Burnham, and it's the way that the United Way kicks off their annual campaign. The first year they did it, they just served these, these teams of people uh, coffee and donuts, and they complained about uh, coffee and donuts for a whole day of work. So the Qantas Club has always been doing pancake festivals, so they asked the Qantas to serve a pancake and sausage breakfast, and we've been doing it for probably at least 10 years. This past year, they told me it was between 175 and 200 volunteers. The volunteers come from industry and other agencies, and they go out into the neighborhood and, and do community service at different projects. When I transferred down here with Bell Telephone a long time ago, they wanted uh, their supervisor to be involved in community service, and I got involved with the United Way and also with the Qantas Club. We are focused primarily on youth. We do the Christmas parade. We have a project where we do clothing for needy children in the community. But we have a thing of early learning where we uh, distribute early learning packets to, to daycare centers and things like that. I think uh, Lewistown is definitely a great place to live. My four children all graduated from uh, Chief Logan and Indian Valley. Three of them went to Penn State, which is very close by, and uh, you have the culture in Penn State that you can take part in. It's just a nice place to, to be. We enjoy it very much. My name is Debbie Wilt, and I'm here to talk about the Lumina Center. Our primary objective at the Lumina Center is to provide free programming for the area children. That's it in a nutshell. It was started in 1994 by a group of uh, Methodist churches. The outside of the building is absolutely fantastic. The artwork was done by the late uh, Dwight Kirkland, and it is just so kid-friendly. I have to say it that way, and I think the community really appreciates it as well. We have a number of programs. During the school season, we are in what we call the Kids Cafe After School Program. They arrive around 3.10, 3.15, and they're with us until 5.30. In addition to the physical activity, the homework time. One of the highlights of our program is our hot meal that we serve. And we find that this is a very, very 
essential part of our program. And then when school is over, our first program in the summer is Rainbow Summer. That is for two weeks in June, Monday through Friday. And believe me, the kids absolutely love this program. They come Monday through Friday from 9 to 3 p.m. We do a variety of things with them, including crafts, Bible story, um, a hot lunch again. They also get a snack. And in the afternoon, weather permitting, we take them to Rec Park swimming. Everything that we offer is free of charge to the, to the kids. What we do for the kids as well is we give them power packs of food. And that is food that is easily prepared and is given to the kids at the end of the week for the weekend. Families struggle and it ensures that these children have food for the weekends. Twice a month, there are 85 power packs given to students in Lewistown Elementary School. And I have to give credit to our local Kiwanis Club for helping to deliver these power packs to Lewistown Elementary School students. It is very important for me to be a part of this because kids are my passion. I love every single one of them. And when they come through those doors, you know, expecting great things, we hope to deliver those. I'm Emily Conaway. I'm from Mifflin County Middle School, and I'm here to talk about the Husky Helpers. The Husky Helpers are a club who, that likes to help their community. There was some sign-up sheets, and well, I thought it would be really cool because I always kind of wanted to like do something like that and help my community, and I just signed up for it. We do a couple of different things helping out in the community. First, we um, go to the um, retirement home, William Penn, and help out the, the residents there. The um, residents there like to share their stories with us, like how they grew up here and everything, and it's really cool. We do student tutoring where um, we tutor kids that need a little help. And then we also do some knitting. We knit hats for the babies. I um, really like the knitting part of it. I'm a student teacher in the knitting one because I already knew how to knit, so I help out the other kids that don't know how to knit yet. At the beginning of the year, our teachers will take some suggestions for what we want to do to help our community, and then, well, we might do someone. Like my friend said, the ice festival would be kind of cool to do a booth there, and well, so we might be doing that this year. I love growing up this area because there's so many friendly people in our neighborhood. We live near the school, so it's easy to get there and get back. Just love it. My name is Willa Adams, and I'm here to talk about New Vision Center. We changed our name about six years ago to New Vision Center. When we started back in 1945, um, it was Juniata Foundation for the Blind. And at that time, we were working to help people who were blind or visually impaired to learn a craft or a business that they could do in their home. Throughout the years, we sort of branched out to help people not just visually impaired or the blind, but also people with other disabilities. The monies that we earn from that business is basically what supports New Vision Center and helps us to provide the services in Mifflin, Juniata, and Huntington counties for people who are blind and visually impaired. We have 19 people with disabilities. We have an in-house production where we do sewing, we finish textiles such as washcloths and blankets and we also make window treatments. We make it at that facility and we also install it and we do that uh, across the Commonwealth. Beyond the, the production we have people who work in janitorial services and they go out and they work independently. And the other place that we employ people is photo ID centers. It's a, your photo licensing technician. So when you go to get your license, the people sitting behind the camera that take your picture and hand you your license, those are our employees. It's just like trying to find an employee for any other job. We're trying to find the right person to fit our job. 
Besides employing people with disabilities, we work with people who are blind and visually impaired. Our job there is to help them stay independent and stay in their home. And the biggest thing that New Visions supplies for those people, in my opinion, is getting them to their medical appointments. We have two drivers who work 30 hours a week transporting people to their medical appointments. And then twice a month we have life support classes. It's a teaching education program. Recently we had people who were training guide dogs, seeing eye dogs, and they showed the group their little puppies that they were training. But I think the really cool thing about New Vision Center is I've been there a bit over 22 years, and I, I'm very proud and happy to say that at the end of every day, I still feel like I've done good things for good people. My name is Peter Ort, and I am here to represent the Rotary Club of Lewistown. The Rotary Club of Lewistown really is a philanthropic organization. We are just here to provide uh, support and help facilitate the community at large. We do a Veterans Day program. One of the club members decided that it would be really appropriate to invite a vet to uh, enjoy a free lunch on the Rotary Club. It was a kind of a, a small start and then the program kind of grew from there. It's really kind of a, a reaching out to the community and just showing them that we really appreciate their service and, and really to honor the veterans that have served. RILA is the Rotary Youth Leadership Awards. Basically, you take students that are uh, juniors and seniors in high school, and we take them to Juniata College, and for four days, they are given really great instruction and training on leadership. We've seen some really neat things come out of that. Uh, we've had students that they come back and want to do a service project. We had a young lady that she wanted to do something with Shelterbox, which is another Rotary initiative. You can raise enough money to purchase a box it gets basically deployed to a disaster area. They were able to not only raise the money to purchase one shelter box, which is over $1,000. The club members were so inspired by her story that they raised another $1,000 to purchase the second shelter box. Rotary works uh, in conjunction with um, some other local entities. We've had a really neat, long tradition with the Boy Scouts locally here. We have a very close collaboration with the Salvation Army and it is another um, charitable organization that we like to try to reach out and do things for them. Relay for Life is a local initiative and it is designed to uh, raise funds for uh, cancer. We are there to support the walkers by giving them refreshments and serving coffee and donuts and so on. And I'm really proud to say that this year uh, we are going to see uh, over 500 children's books purchased for the library for the children's department. And that was directly due to Rotary raising the money. So it's gratifying to see that. For me, Rotary is really about fellowship, being able to get together with other like-minded people. But it goes much deeper than that. And really, Rotary has been a blessing to me and my family because it allows me to be able to do things that I can and raise money for different initiatives, but beyond that I have the ability to be hands-on. To see the history of the club for 95 years, what's been going on, to see the good it does in our community, it just makes me proud that I'm able to be called a Rotarian and I love to be a part of the club. Uh, it's just interacting with great people and doing great things in the community. Stick around as we watch high schoolers run a TV station look back in time through a postcard collection, and experience how theater brings the community together. But first, show your support for Lewistown and WPSU by making a pledge. Thanks. And we hope you are enjoying Our Town Lewistown here on your local public television station, our local public television station, WPSU. And we saw Roger Herto there, his group, uh, the Mifflin County High School, and their, their broadcasting organization. You're going to hear more about that. We have a lot more of Our Town Lewistown to celebrate tonight. Folks from Lewistown here answering your calls tonight. And it looks like we have some empty phones there, so please give them a call. Uh, thank you, 1-800-245-9779. I mentioned Mifflin County High School. I also wanted to send a shout-out to Norma O'Brien. Sorry, Mrs. O'Brien. 
forgot your name a little while ago, and Amy Bergstrom. They're doing some great work with that organization, uh, Husky Helpers. And first time ever, they're doing tutoring in the school. And they have, you know, 20 kids who are out. They're visiting nursing homes, and they're knitting hats for newborns. Really great work, and really great for your community to see what's happening in those schools. And, and it's very refreshing, let me tell you. So I, I, that's what this is all about. This program is about seeing the good that's happening in your community. And I'm, what I'm asking you to do tonight is put a dollar value on that to say, I, I am saying with my dollar that I want to support PBS. I want to support WPSU because it has taken time to dedicate to the good stories that are happening in my community, stories we can all celebrate. So please give us a call, 1-800-245-9779. If you can step up, there's Carrie Cullen. If you can step up that gift just a little bit more to $75, we'll be glad to send you a DVD uh, for, uh, for the, of the program tonight. Uh, and if you can step up just a little bit more for $120, um, we'll give you two DVDs. And these are great gifts. Um, if, you, if you do pledge with a credit card tonight, uh, we can get those to you for the holidays if you're planning on giving them as gifts. If not, uh, we'll get them to you as soon as possible. 1-800-245-9779 is the number to call. I do have one thank you. I want to thank Megan Bender uh, of calling in from Harrisburg. The Bender family, originally from the Lewistown Narrows, uh, before the highway, uh, Bender Roofing Company, for those of you in Lewistown that remember that. And that's a neat area down through the Narrows there, Hostone, uh, and it's a really great area. It's all part of that canal that Forrest Fisher talked about a little bit earlier in the evening, and Charles, uh, Charles Dickens coming to town, and Teddy Roosevelt wanting to see that great train robbery. Uh, so lots of cool stuff happening in Lewistown. 1-800-245-9779 or WPSU.org. It's a safe, secure site. You can feel good about making your contribution or gift there. Pat. Uh, some folks I'd like to thank, starting with uh, our very own Kevin Conaway and uh, Jennifer and Emily, who made their gift uh, from the studio here tonight, but ordinarily they would do that from Reedsville. Thank you so much, Kevin and family. Uh, I'd like to thank um, Ken, um, and I'm sorry, I'm not sure I got this right. Ken Schobert, I think is maybe the name from McVeigh Town. Thank you so much, Ken. Great to hear from you. We appreciate your support. Uh, I would like to thank Jean Goss Lore from Center Hall, and the note says, uh, originally from the Glenwood area, a big hello to all my relatives in the area. So, Jean, thank you so much for making your gift tonight around this show. Uh, we are very appreciative. Sorry, and now I'm dropping things again. Uh, I'd also like to thank Dorothy Hartsfield of Grampian, PA. Uh, in memory of her grandparents that lived on Visco Hill in Lewistown, Edward and Helen Clark, and all her aunts and uncles from the area. So, Dorothy, thank you so very much for your gift of support. We are very, very appreciative. Good to hear from you. As near as I can tell, I've been kind of counting lines in the back of my head, and I think we have about four lines busy right now, which would mean that we have four or five lines open. So now would be an excellent time for you to make your call. We were hoping to have reach a goal of 150 call, calls for the show tonight. We've got lots more show to come, but we really need to make some progress on reaching that goal. Right now we're at about 65 calls overall, so we're not quite halfway. We'd love to gain some ground on that during this break. We'd love to hear from you next. I'd love to thank you. I love the Our Town series because I think it is the most important piece of local programming that we do. It's the stories that you want to tell. It's the footage that you choose to shoot. It's the things that you believe are important. It's the things that you want other folks to know about your community. And Our Town is a diary for a whole town. It's a, it's a diary for a whole community, and it's only possible because of the people who make those stories and because of the station that puts those stories together into a show. So if you're enjoying this show, we want to hear from you. If you've never been a member, make your call, become a member now. If you're liking the show so much, you want a copy that you can watch anytime, make that call at 1-800-245-9779 and make a gift of $75, and we will thank you with a DVD copy of the program you're watching tonight. For a gift of $120, we will thank you with two DVDs of the program you're watching tonight. Keep one for yourself. Give one to a friend or a neighbor or a relative who maybe wouldn't have been able to afford it, who would really appreciate this show but didn't have the capacity to make a gift on their own. You never go wrong giving somebody a copy of Our Town from WPSU. Now to talk more about the show and to talk more about how you can help this station, my friend and colleague, Bill Wallace. When we started doing this program years ago, we did it sort of as a, a day in the life sort of thing where we would get everybody together and we'd sort of explain what we wanted them to do and then send them out with their video cameras and they'd all shoot everything they needed to do within a few hours and bring it back to us and sit down and tell us what they'd shot. And we found over the years that it was a lot more 
comprehensive is, is too fancy a word. It's a, it was a lot better storytelling if we gave people a chance to think about what it was they wanted to tell and bring all the pieces together visually and, and maybe interview some friends who may have some more experience or some knowledge about the topic and bring all that to us after they'd had a chance to prepare. And, and this shows a perfect example of it. Kevin's story on, on American Viscose and, and uh, Juniata Terrace and generations and generations of people who put their roots down in Lewistown and, and made their homes and made their families. And that's not the sort of thing you can do in an afternoon. It takes an awful lot of effort. It takes an awful lot of, of forethought. And the people in Lewistown have done just that. They've, they've really put their, their hearts into, into putting this show together. And I, that sort of generosity should not go unrewarded. So pick up the phone and call 1-800-245-9779 or go to the internet at wpsu.org and make a pledge of support like the people I'm going to thank right here. We got a call from John Dybach from Reedsville. Uh, thank you for your, for your pledge. Gene Ward from Reedsville. Now I'm getting all the Reedsville calls. Thank you for your pledge. Ted and, uh, Ted and Kate Long from Lewistown, thank you for calling in and making your pledge of support. Judy and Skip Headings, from Jaegertown. And this one's going to be another one of those challenges. Pat Donan Stoikovy, I believe it is, from Warriors Mark, Nailed it. called in. Her grandparents, Luba Stoikovy and Charles and Lily Stewart, and parents were from Burnham. Luba's restaurant in Burnham was owned and run by my grandmother, Luba Stoikovy. So talk about talk about that family history, that generations of people who have been involved in the community and are happy to let other people know how proud they are of that. A uh, call from Willa and Ross Adams from Bullsburg and a call from Carolyn Donaldson. Actually not a call because she's standing in the studio smiling at me right now. A making a, a drive-by pledge as we call it, yes. And Virginia Turner from Evansburg who had a beauty shop in Lewistown for 35 years and wanted to call in to pledge her support and get a copy of this really cool program. 1-800-245-9779 is the number to call if you'd like a copy for yourself or for a friend. $120 will get you two if you have two friends. WPSU.org is the other alternative if the phones are busy. Kevin. And I can guarantee, Bill, Lewistownians have more than two friends, so I think they'll be all set there. Hey, there was a little bit of debate here from some of the Lewistownians. Uh, it might have been Stokovy, so either way, we're good now. We've, co we've covered both. Uh, and Luba's, what a great restaurant. That's now Cora's, uh, so it's a really great part of this, that standard steel community, part of the American Viscos, part of Fisher's, the Stereo Company, Phillips, all the GE, all these wonderful community uh, town places that have been there for a while, uh, Corvette America now. Lewistown has a lot to be proud of. 1-800-245-9779 is the number to call to celebrate your community, our town, Lewistown. I, I want to thank the students back here. That That's not one of the students right there, but the students from Mifflin County Academy of Science and Technology and the Mifflin County High School. We have a lot of great stories coming up on the Mifflin County High School. We're going to hear about from Roger Herto about MCTV. Uh, and I understand they've been playing the original Our Town, Lewistown, so some of you may have seen that leading into this. Um, we're also going to hear from Abby Traxler uh, uh, about... Uh, uh, an anti-bullying campaign that she come up and, and uh, come up with, and I, I'm, you're going to be really impressed with this. Um, we're going to hear from uh, some really cool p picture postcards of Lewis Town. It's a really awesome collect collection that you're going to get to hear about. Um, we're going to hear about Lockport and the Wesley Chapel there, and this is a story I had not heard about about Lewis Town. So it's really a cool thing. Um, Kenzie McCarter, a, a kind of a local river idol, and, and singing uh, country western. Some really great stuff Kenzie's doing in that community, and you're going to hear a little bit from her tonight. Um, Phyllis Johnson is going to talk about the Stone Arch players and, and that kids ca camp that I was mentioning a little uh, earlier that she's doing with Julia Euphemia, the Evolution Arts Center. We're really proud of that. Uh, and then we're going to hear from... Uh, from Riley Cullen, who is going to talk about that Mifflin County High School band, uh, that, that wonderful, uh, they had kind of a sci-fi thing going on this year, and so we're, we're excited to bring you that. So 1-800-245-9779 is the number to call. And what I encourage you to do is, you know, think about the last time that our town, Lewistown, an entire evening of programming 
was dedicated to a, a local place. Uh, you know, it was probably the last time was Our Town Lewistown Kids Cut or, or, Our Ta or the original Our Town Lewistown. It, and that was 10 years ago. So if you value that, if you want to see your community on your local public television station, I'm asking you to make a pledge tonight. I'm asking you to say, I value this. And what I will tell you is that seed money will then create the next one, the next one, the next season. We're in our 20th season right now, the 21st season. We're in our 90th program. Uh, and, and, and we have a great track record with this program. It's, it's actually my favorite thing that PBS does. You're in the community. That's what we're all about. So what I'm asking you to do tonight, you know, Our Town, Lewistown, WPSU has been a part of Our Town, Lewistown for more than 50 years now. And, and I remember coming here um, to, to answer phones when I was a teenager, when I was one of those Mifflin County High School students. I, I remember watching Weather World with my grandparents. So we, we are an important partnership. WPSU and Lewistown go together like Hartley's potato chips and a good cold Coca-Cola. 1-800-245-9779 is the number to call. And I'm going to toss it on over to Pat. I believe he has more thank yous, right, Pat? I do indeed. Um, and by the way, a, Hartley's, uh, a bag of Hartley's potato chips actually goes with any five minutes that you have because that's all the longer it takes me to finish an entire bag. 1-800-245-9779 is the number that you call in order to make your contribution tonight. Again, as Kevin was talking about, this is local programming. These are the stories that your friends and neighbors share amongst each other and share with you in summertime backyard barbecues. These are the sh stories that come out of the festivals and out of the concerts on the square. These are the stories that are the things that are passed from family to family and generation to generation. These are the things that we all grew up talking about around the table. And that's really what an Our Town is. It's a great big family reunion. It's an opportunity to share those stories, but not just amongst yourselves, but with everybody who hasn't had the chance to know and appreciate Lewistown the way that you have. Tonight we get a chance, courtesy of the hard work of a number of volunteers who help create the show, we have the chance to share those stories, to highlight and celebrate Lewistown. And we're asking right now for your help. Your help comes with your contribution at 1-800-245-9779. Um, I'd also like to thank some folks who've already done their part. I'd like to thank Host Tetler's Truck Bodies and Trailers. I'd like to thank Kish Bank. We had uh, support from Standard Steel of Burnham, PA. We had support from Valley View Retirement Community, as well as Overhead Door Corporation, the Pennsylvania Division. So thanks to those companies, those manufacturers, those businesses who did their part tonight uh, to help make tonight possible. I'd also like to thank, before I forget, Ronald Thomas of Lewistown. Ronald, thank you so much for your call earlier. I'd like to thank Scott and Lisa Hackenberg of Lewistown. Thank you for your call of support. I'd like to thank Joyce Beers of Lewistown. Thank you. It was great to hear from you. Sorry, if I drop these, I'm in big trouble. I'd like to thank William, uh, excuse me, Bill and Sandy Gomez of Lewistown. Thank you so much for your call earlier. And one more. Sorry, where to go? Um, Kathy and Tim Pollock of Altoona, Pennsylvania. Thanks. Great to hear from you as well. We would love to hear from you next. We'd love to thank you next. We'd like to get all these phones lit up. We'd like to have all these volunteers busy. Their gift to the station, their gift to Lewistown is their time and their energy tonight. Honor their gift. Contribute to their gift with one of your own right now at 1-800-245-9779. Bill. Some more people to thank. Uh, Richard Scanlon of Lewistown, PA. Uh, <laughs> Cole Cullen's ex-dentist, I'm told. What did you do to this person? Oh, fine. <laughs> retired. Sure he did. He was driven into early retirement, I'm sure. Sarah Buffington from Reedsville uh, with a web pledge, with a, uh, an online pledge. We greatly appreciate those as well as the phone calls. Uh, Vivian Holland from Milroy, who really enjoys watching PVS and says it's a, this is a really great show. And we agree with her wholeheartedly. This really is a great show. Uh, Donna Hughes from Lewistown, in honor and memory of my mother, Madeline Hassinger. We appreciate that greatly. And Polly Wilson, Pauline Wilson, whichever way you would prefer it, from Lewistown, thank you very much for your pledge of support. The phones are a little quiet right now. They're not speaking very loudly. No. We're, well, okay, five lines is important. We can, we can, we need to fill those five lines. Uh, one eight hundred two four five nine seven seven nine is the way to do that. And if you'd prefer not to talk to one, talk to one of our uh, 
friendly and lovely volunteers. WPSU.org is the way to go about it online. I'm going to send it down to Kevin because he has a handful of people I, to thank as we well. We sure do. I want to thank Joanne Noor of McVeigh Town. Joanne, good to hear from McVeigh Town tonight. And she also wanted to mention her son, Scott. So, Joanne and Scott, thank you for calling in from McVeigh Town. Great, great little town there. Must have some family from there as well. I want to thank John Traxler family, Andrew, Riley, Regan, uh, Regan, Regan, Regan. I know they're in the neighborhood here somewhere. Regan, Regan. Uh, Abby and Jacob Traxler, thank you for calling in your pledge of support. And, and we have a great story from the Traxler family coming up. You're going to hear a little bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're going to hear a little more about that buddy bench that I keep talking about that's, that, that I've seen at the school. And I've actually sat on it. It's pretty cool. Um, I want to thank Mr. and Mrs. Harvey and Jackie Eckert of Lewistown for calling in. And I also want to thank... Rick Wilkinson, and, and this one touches my heart a little bit. It makes my labor of love worth it. I, I, we, they wanted to thank me for the segment on Juniata Terrace, uh, donating in honor of Rick's father, Dick Wilkinson, who grew up on the terrace. And, and here's the cool part. Dick's aunt was the teacher in the picture from the story that we had done that the Mifflin County Historical Society, Forrest Fisher, helped me uh, dig up. And I, I, the one that strikes me, too, is the, the World War II photo, and I believe that's Pat Naylor's mother. Really some great images that, that Forrest helped us dig up. So, so Dick, it's, it's wonderful to put uh, a, a, a name and, 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 a, and that picture. And I know my aunt and uncle talked about uh, having that, that teacher, and my dad did. Uh, so it's really great that your aunt did that. And that, what a neat school. What, what a neat need history. What, what a great part to be a part of, of Juniata Terrace in Lewistown. And, and that's what we're asking you to think about tonight. We're asking you to think about uh, what it means to see your community play out on television, to, to celebrate your community. And, and WPSU takes this serious. I, I know these producers here. This is something they love to do. They love to go out into these communities and they love to tell stories. Uh, and they love to tell stories about the local community. And, and But they need a little bit of seed money to be able to do that. And, and, and really, we break even on everything, but, but they, they're asking you tonight to think about the seed money for the next program to give us a call at 1-800-245-9779. We have these students from Mifflin County High School back here. We have the, from the uh, Mifflin County Science and Technology Academy. Uh, they're here to take your calls. And what a great group of young students that we've been chatting with tonight. 1-800-245-9779 uh, is the number to call. Lots of great stories on Mifflin County High School and the things the students are doing. And we're going to head back to the program right now. 1-800-245-9779. Please give them a call. Here's our town, Lewistown. You can also make your contribution at WPSU.org. Click on Donate at the top of the page. It's always available and easy to use. Thanks. I'm Roger Herto. I'm a media teacher at Mifflin County High School. Um, really happy to be in public education at Mifflin County. I'm the media teacher there. And in addition to that, I have the honor of running MCTV, which is a local government educational channel. MCTV is on the air. It's been quite a while coming. Back in 1999, I got my teaching certificate and met with the superintendent at that time. And he said, we want to have a TV studio here within the school. I went and visited government educational channels all across Pennsylvania. We've been teaching kids media for many years. We built a TV studio. We are very unique here. The station is funded by Lewistown Borough, by the Mifflin County Commissioners, by the Mifflin County School District, and uh, with the financial help of some local agencies like Mifflin County Communities That Care. PSAT testing will take place on Wednesday, October 19th in the morning at MCHS. We have 14 kids uh, each year that run our studio. Our, our slogan at the station is, if it's happening in Mifflin County, it's happening on MCTV. Government meetings locally are our main function right now. In the future, we hope to expand that. And then as far as uh, the educational part goes, uh, school concerts, school plays, uh, we put graduation on the air. Our studio is state-of-the-art. We just did our first high school sporting event the other night with student anchors and uh, students running all the cameras and students in the studio. So to see them uh, get that opportunity for me is uh, really, really a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, Franklin with the early set and Parks able to capitalize and put one down on them. My job is to teach the students what to do and then get out of their way and uh, 
let them uh, show what they can do, and it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. We've turned out approximately 30 kids now over the years that uh, are now working in the business, and that would not happen in this area if we didn't have a program like this. So we're very grateful for the opportunity, and more importantly, the kids are making the most of it. And uh, we're just getting started. I was born and raised in Reedsville, uh, left the area, like many of the students I teach now, thinking I would never come back. I've been a lot of different places, could have ended up in a lot of different places, but to raise a family, I don't know of a better place. My wife and I have been fortunate. We're both educators. We believe in the local school system here, and it's been an honor to do this because working with these kids and uh, seeing what they can do is just, just a great, great experience. My name is Abby Traxler, and my story is about the Miss Central Pennsylvania Scholarship Pageant. The pageant started in 1977, and it was first named Miss Tri-County when it was started, and now it's Miss Central Pennsylvania. In 2006, they added a teen portion to the pageant. My mom was Miss Tri-County, and I grew up wearing her crown, going in her room, looking in the mirror, and just wanting to do it when I was older. And there was a princess program. So every year since I was, I believe, three or four, I was a princess in the pageant. And now I can compete and actually hold a title. You start the day with a private interview with the judges. The judging portion starts with fitness, where we do a little dance, and they judge our physical fitness and how confident we are with ourselves. There's talent where they judge our artistic expression and how talented we are. There's also evening gown where they judge our poise and we answer an on-stage question, which is a little nerve-wracking. Abby, if you could be on the cover of any magazine, which would you choose? All contestants are required to have a platform. Mine is called Project Abby. Abby stands for Anti-Bullying for a Better Youth. And I currently have buddy benches in all five local elementary schools. If kids are lonely, they can sit on the benches and their friends or other classmates are supposed to come up and invite them to play with them. My platform was inspired by my issues with bullying. I've been bullied since a very young age. So I'd just like to promote positivity and maybe we can end this for the future generations. Every year, my favorite event in Lewistown was always going to see the pageant and watching the girls compete. So that I can finally compete, my first time was so fulfilling and I was so excited. The community is so supportive of everything I do with the pageant. I couldn't do it alone and all the people in Lewistown to support me no matter the outcome. I've been first runner up three years at the Miss Pennsylvania's Outstanding Teen Pageant and every time I come home everybody's so happy for me and I couldn't ask for anything else. My name is Michelle Hogel. I've lived in Lewistown all my life. Today I would like to share my penny postcards. I have a personal collection of some very unique postcards. Some of them are dated back as early as 1904. Back in the early 1900s, postcards and written letters were a way for people to correspond and keep in touch with loved ones, family, and friends. You were able to send a postcard for one penny. They shared birthdays, well wishes, and holiday greetings. The postcards show a history of the town, how people lived and how it evolved and grew. It shows how the church and school was very important to the people and their faith and their values. The postcards show early downtown Lewistown. Back whenever the trolley car was still in Lewistown, people used to ride the trolley car to get from here to there. The postcard that's a favorite of mine is the one of the American Visco. My father was employed there, and during the flood of 1972, my father came across the river bridge in a boat. One of the postcards that I think is pretty funny is a lady named Dora sent a postcard of the jail to her friend Frank and told him if he didn't behave himself, he would end in there soon. 
When I look at the postcards of the early days in Lewistown, it brings back a lot of memories. I was born and raised in Lewistown. I've lived here my entire life. I really like the mountains and the state parks. Lewistown is a place that I call home. My name is Patty Burke. I'm a member of the Wesley Chapel United Methodist Church in Lockport, and my story is about Wesley Chapel, the history of the church. In 1828, a man by the name of Owen Owens came from Middletown. He was appointed to uh, be a lock tender for the Pennsylvania Canal. A Methodist uh, society out of the Baltimore Conference, they had circuit rider preachers. Owen Owens offered land to them to build a church, and our church was built in 1832. They only held services from April to October because of the bad weather, and the only means of transportation they had was horse and buggy or to walk. In 1955, we wanted more space, so an addition was put on. And then in 1969, our major project was excavating underneath the old church, but they couldn't get any machinery in, so they had to do it by hand. And my grandmother, Viola Brower, was one of the oldest members there. She was a member since 1910, and she helped dig that out. And then in 1988, we purchased the property across the church, and it made it into a fellowship hall. Then in 1990, we had renovations, uh, new carpet, new pews, and then the old windows from 1832 were replaced with new stained glass windows. And in June the 4th of 2017, we are going to be celebrating our anniversary of 185 years. Lockport is a small community. People that went in 1832, they're still grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren coming to the church now. I'm Kenzie McCarter, and I'm a local singer and actress, and my story is about performing around Mifflin County and outside the area. I actually started singing when I was four years old at my preschool, which is a local church in the area. And I was a really shy child. Like, nobody thought that I was going to be able to do a solo, but then I did, and it just has kind of always been there. I've sang at a lot of different events. My first two hour event was really cool the Milroy Fireman's Festival. I also do a lot of local supporting events. I've done um, Mifflin County Band Boosters, which is really cool because a lot of my classmates are in band, and to be able to support them and just sing while they're doing their different activities and crafts, it's a lot of fun. I've also sang at Lights in the Darkness for a couple years now down at Kish Park, and that's always fun too, because I mean, it's the Christmas spirit and everybody loves that. I'm hoping to get a band started sometime soon, but right now it's by myself with tracks or I started playing guitar too. I feel like in the last couple years, it seemed to really bloom in the area, in the arts. Julie Euphema, she's helped me a long ways supporting me through the arts. Stone Arch, I got involved in theater in the park, which was a lot of fun. I got to be involved in their first teen production. It was a really cool experience to be part of. I'm so excited for Evolution Art Center to open under Julie Euphema. It's going to be a great experience for people in the area who are maybe already involved in the arts or want to find something new to do, and I think it's going to be just so cool. To live in Mifflin County and in Lewistown, it's really cool because everybody knows everybody. It has the small town feel, but it's cool when I go to different events to meet different people that maybe I wouldn't have met, or even just being involved in different arts programs, I get to meet people that I would have never dreamed of, some of my best friends.
My name is Phyllis Johnson. I am the president of the Stone Arch Players Board of Directors, and Stone Arch Players is the Lewistown Area Community Theater. <laughs> Our purpose when we were founded was to bring a live theater to the community. This is our 50th anniversary season. We do three major productions a year, and we try to bring the audience uh, mystery, comedy, drama, anything that they might like. I ask you to be on time, Annabelle. On time? But that death trap you call a road, you're lucky to be here at all. Stone Arch started in 1967. Local people were talking and they decided, you know, the one thing that we don't have here is a community theater. Thyre and Paul Ulbrich had a background in theater. And so it started where they were just teaching acting and they were going over scripts until they finally decided that, why don't we do a major production? They put on The Mouse That Roared. It was a success and from that point on, they just continued. We were offered the building out at the community park and we moved out there in 1982. We're trying to reach out to bring young people in, different people in, so that we can continue for another 50 years. A few years ago, under the direction of Julie Ufema, we started a children's camp, a theater camp. It became so huge that by the third year, we not only had a children's camp, we had so many kids and they were so amazingly talented what we decided to do was to have a production for teens with teens and they were 15 of the most amazing young people i've ever seen i want to lie i want to sell them i don't want to sell them i want to go to the bathroom <laughs> they stole the show they showed that even in a small community like Lewistown, there's talent and there's depth, and these kids just want the opportunity to shine. Um, is this the right place? I've been in the theater for 38 years, but I've never had as much fun as I've had in these last three years dealing with the, the students and the, the teens and the kids. It's just been very gratifying. It's just an amazing group of people from different walks of life who come together to do this amazing creative thing. I don't know if I would be friends with some of these people if I weren't involved in the theater and my life would be that much poorer for it. You know, I'm willing to give her the benefit of the doubt and she snuck a man in here. She's never I moved to Lewistown when I was uh, 15 years old. I made friends very quickly. These people are friends to this day. Lewistown has artists, photographers, dancers, thespians. We are an art center and even though people think we're just rural, there's so much culture and there's so much talent here that I think that people who say, oh, it's just central Pennsylvania, I think they're missing a lot if they don't look beyond that and see that it's a real gem here in Lowe's Town. I'm Riley Cohen, and my story is the Mifflin County High School Marching Band. I've been in the band for two years. This is my second year. I joined the band because both of my parents were in marching band and because I wanted to try something new and I already kind of liked music. <laughs> this year's show is space themed. We're playing some Star Trek, some Star Wars, and some of the planets. We start practice mid-July, and we practice two days a week, and then band camp starts, and band camp is for two weeks, five days a week, and it's eight hours a day in the scorching hot sunlight. The school year starts, we practice twice a week, and we do that for the rest of the season. On Friday, we have a football game. We perform and we play in the stands and then we go back home and we go to sleep 
And then we're up early again the next day for Saturday morning practice, which is usually super early in the morning, like 9 o'clock. Then we practice for two or three hours that morning, and then we go to the competition. A bunch of bands will go to a competition, and there's judges that walk around on the field and watch you from off the field, and then they judge us on how good we marched and how good we played, and then we get scored on that. We had a Star Wars night at one of the home football games, and a bunch of members of the 501st Legion came. The 501st Legion is a group of people that professionally dress up as Star Wars characters. It was really cool. Having my brother in the band is kind of weird. Because I feel like I could tell him what to do, but I know he's not going to listen to me. <laughs> so even if, I, even if I try to help, he won't really, he won't really care. But I try anyway sometimes. My favorite part of being in Marching Man is all the other people in Marching Man because they're all so nice. Compared to a lot of the other kids that I see during school, the people in Marching Man are very, very nice. They're just great kids. There's nobody who doesn't have a friend. There's always somebody for you somewhere in the Marching Man. It's a nice area. I feel like there's not really anywhere where there's nothing to do either. It's a great place to live. And that's Our Town, Lewistown, a look at the Mifflin County community through the eyes of its residents. Support for Our Town, Lewistown comes from Hostetler's Truck Bodies and Trailers, Route 322, Milroy, serving the Lewistown community for over 80 years. Information at dkhostetler.com. Kish Bank, serving the community for 106 years, offering banking, insurance, financial planning, and travel services. Kish Bank, expect more. Standard Steel in Burnham, Pennsylvania, depending on the skills and resourcefulness of the people from our area communities since 1795. Valley View Retirement Community, located in Big Valley, Belleville, offering rehab services for all ages. Information at 717-935-2105. And viewers like you. Thank you. So that is Our Town, Lewistown. And if you look at the credits that are running now, you will find page after page after page of names of volunteers who came in to do a story, shot pictures or provided pictures to help the folks who were doing the stories tell those stories. And these are really the heroes of this show. We've got people here at the station who assemble all of this material for them, but these are the folks who decided that this was important enough to go out and, and work on this to tell the stories of their hometown or the town that they've adopted, the, the town that has become home for them. It's just, I, I, I'm amazed when I'm putting this list together every show at the number of people who are, who, who just are willing to put the time into doing this. To, to dig through those shoe boxes full of old pictures or, or figure out which face goes with which name in the, at the historical society. It's, it's just amazing. Stuff that we would never know if these people didn't put this effort into it. And the stories that they come up with are just wonderful. So, if you would like to support the kind of programming that these people worked hard on, for the next time we can go to another town, 1-800-245-9779 is the number. Or you could go to the web at wpsu.org and make a pledge online, and we will greatly appreciate that as well. I have a couple of people to thank. 
Ken Fisher from Lewistown for a pledge of support. He says, what a great show. Ruth and I would like to pledge to honor our very dear friend and executive director of the Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Jim Tunnall, who recently passed away. His energy and enthusiasm for our area was contagious. I think it was. The people who are here tonight, the people who work on these shows, on this show, that spirit is contagious. And Diane McVeigh from State College, McVeigh Town is named for her family. I think that's really cool that somebody called in with that bit of information. And the, the probably my most my favorite of the night, Dave Heggie, a good friend, classmate of mine who lives in Center Hall, said, This is in honor of Bill Wallace. Don't butcher my name or you have to do a matching pledge. Go Penn State. Kevin. What what was that, Bill? Don't butcher my name or you'll have to make a matching pledge. Who, who did we butcher? No, it was somebody oh, else, oh, I, I thought maybe I did. I think I it had something to do with the restaurant that I, I oh, mispronounced. Oh, oh, yes, Lou, yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I want to send a thank you out to Leo Dukes, who called in. Leo um, grew, up on the, grew up on the terrace, knew my grandfather, and he was asking if he knew, uh, if I knew my grandfather's nickname. He used to play on the baseball team, and apparently they used to call him Flatbush. Um, and, it's, and, and people probably wonder what that's about. My grandfather was from Grass Flat, Clearfield County, and so that was really interesting to me when we did our town Clearfield because I got to learn a lot about that area and the coal mining industry that was a part of that. But so Leo Dukes called in to say, hey, did you know about Flatbush? And that, I actually heard that from Danny Davis, uh, who also grew up on the hill. That was the first I had heard that. And that's one of the great things about this uh, is I get to hear these great stories that I didn't really yeah, – my grandfather passed away before I was born, so I, I've got to hear some really great stories about him, and it was really fascinating. And, and that's what I'm asking you to if, think about putting a dollar value on that. Think about paying it forward uh, at 1-800-245-9779. Uh, we have the great students here from Mifflin County High School uh, and the Mifflin County Academy uh, and, and, Science and of Science and Technology taking your calls, and they're eager to take your call. 1-800-245-9779. Okay, I'd like to thank some folks, if I may, uh, to Richard and June Taylor of Burnham. A big thank you. We appreciate your call. Thank you for uh, joining us this evening. Um, Alex Haywood of Lewistown, thank you so much for your call and for your gift to WPSU tonight. Um, would like to, uh, uh, okay, um, I'm going to blame this on handwriting. I think it might be Lois Armstrong of Lewistown, says she's enjoying this wonderful program. Would like to remind everyone uh, of the Mifflin County Garden Club, 80 years in Lewistown. So I think, uh, I think that's uh, um, um, Lois from Lewistown. Um, and then Connie Hassinger of Lewistown, in memory of Melissa Sky Collins, her granddaughter. So thank you for your gift. Thank you for taking the time to make a call tonight. Hey, did you make your call yet? Did we have a chance to thank you? As, uh, as both my friends and colleagues, Kevin and Bill, have pointed out, it's your gift tonight that not only helps to have made this show possible, along with the contributions of so many others who gave of their time and their energy, of their abilities <clears throat> in creating the show, but your gift tonight helps make sure that there are our towns in the future and that there's other local programming as well. So your gift right now at 1-800-245-9779 is critical to the future of our towns. It's critical to the future of this station. It's critical to you and everyone in your household, on your street, and in your town that makes use of all of the content that's available here on public television. It doesn't just pay for in our town, it pays for your small children's or your small grandchildren's favorite programs throughout the day. It pays for your favorite episodes of Masterpiece. It pays for your news and news hour every night. It pays for those episodes of Frontline that you watch. Every gift that we receive on an evening's programming like this, on an evening's fundraising like this, is a gift in support of programming. So if you haven't made your call yet, we really need to hear from you right now in this last break. That number to call is 1-800-245-9779. We have a lot of great volunteers here in the studio tonight. They're standing by, well, they're sitting by, but they're waiting to take your call right now. Go to that phone, make that call, make your gift, and do your part. And thank you for doing that right now. Bill. We are standing by. They are sitting by. One more person to thank right now, uh, Lynn and David Schultz of Reedsville. This I'm holding is pledge number 91. Pledge number 91. We have a ways to go. I would like to see us here within the next couple of minutes. Fill every one of those phones and bring us to 100. Do you think it is possible that the people of Mifflin County and Lewistown could do that in order to support this program and future our towns? 
The number is 1-800-245-9779 or go to your computer and type in WPSU.org and you can make a web pledge. Kevin, do you have anybody else to thank down there? Honorable mentions that I'd like to add. Um, so R.B. Powell called in a little earlier, and R.B. was one of my English teachers, but I also found out through the course of the evening that he was our executive producer, Jeff Hughes' teacher. And now Jeff remembers this, but I do not, that he taught him in English class how to have semi-photographic memory. So that either means I wasn't paying that much attention, which isn't all that surprising. I, I'm sure R.B. would attest to, um, but Jeff wanted to pass along that we remember that well. So 1-800-245-9779 is the number to call. And, and I heard Pat mention Alex Hay Haywood a little earlier. Uh, he worked with my mom for many years in Glick's shoe store, and so I, it was good to hear Alex calling in tonight. So, Alex, thank you. 1-800-245-9779 is the number to call, or, or you can make a, a pledge at WPSU.org. It's been great to hear from all the communities throughout Mifflin County tonight, and, and really, this is one of your last chances to get that DVD. So if you've been thinking about, you know, I'd like to have this, I'd like to share with my grandchildren, I'd like to just have a copy around the house for when I want to look at some of these things. I, I, I know I took advantage of that because I, I, I want to check this out from time to time. Give us a call at 1-800-245-9779. Uh, a, a gift of $75 will get you one DVD. But if you can step up, you're giving just a bit more to $120. Uh, we'll be glad to send you two DVDs. Uh, one for you and one to share or one to, or to pass on to your family members. Uh, it, it's really a great investment. And as we've been saying all night, this money is seed money for the next Our Town. And, and we'll be making those decisions in the spring and then we'll have a whole other series this is our 90th program. This is the 20th year for the Our Town program. Uh, and it just celebrates one central Pennsylvania community after another. And isn't that really what PBS is all about, especially your local PBS station? The, you know, PBS brings you the culture of the world uh, into your living room. And your local public television station, WPSU, brings you your local culture, your local customs, your local news in, in a way that just is, is incredible. 1-800-245-9777. Give a big shout out to Linda Leiter who called from West Virginia to make a, a contribution to the station and support the show and support our town, Lewistown. We'd ask now that you do your part. We're, we're closing on 100. That's a bit under the goal we had originally set for tonight, but frankly, we'd still be pretty pleased and pretty impressed if we could get to 100 contributions, uh, 100 callers tonight. The number to make that happen is 1 800 245 9779. Of course, you can also make your gift online at wpsu.org. Um, if you've enjoyed the show, that's your reason to call. If you, if this is uh, your community, if this is your town, if this is your family, that's your reason to call. And if this is your public television station, absolutely, positively, your reason to call right now at 1-800-245-9779. Remember, if you make a gift of $75, we can send you a copy of the show you've been watching tonight on DVD. Make a gift of $120, we'll send you two copies. Keep one for yourself, maybe give one to a friend. And if you make that gift on a credit card, we can, we're going to make every possible effort to have those DVDs to you before the holiday gets here. So go to the phone right now, 1-800-245-9779. Bring that credit card, make your contribution, do your part. Bill. Two more people to thank. Pauline Stoner of Lewistown, uh, who uh, called in with a very generous pledge of support, and Andrew Haller of Lewistown, who is shouting out to the Lewistown Granville class of 1969, you know who you are. It is now time to pick up the phone. 1-800-245-9779 is the number, or WPSU.org, to make a web pledge. The folks in the studio here, the folks who have worked on this program, they've all put a great deal of effort into making this story, their stories, happen. And we greatly appreciate the effort that they have gone to in order to do it. We think we've put a really, really nice show together that is entertaining and informative. And even if you don't have friends, relatives, or any, any history in Lewis, Lewistown, it's still something that would be entertaining to watch. And we're pretty proud of it. We'd like to be able to keep doing shows like this. This is our community involvement where we go out into the community and let people know that we are there to help them tell their stories and we'd like to be able to keep doing it we're really happy with 
the people that we meet. We're really happy with the stories that we're able to tell and the folks who show up to, to tell us those stories are happy with what we do as well. So if you'd like to see this sort of programming continue, 1-800-245-9779 is the number to call. I'll send it back down to Kevin, who apparently has a friend. I have a special guest and a longtime friend, uh, my classmate, Cole Cullen, who we both graduated from Indian Valley in 1992. And another of our classmates has stepped up to give a pledge. And so we heard from Abby Pickett, who Cole and I both have known and, and went to Penn State with uh, and, and uh, uh, worked with at Penn State. So we're glad to hear from you, Abby, and thank you uh, for stepping up your giving, one 800 245 and Cole and I are celebrating our oh he's dashing celebrate actually stay here a second we're celebrating our, our our 25th high school reunion this year and I don't think either of us look like a day over 40 like maybe not at all not at all not at all thank you uh, Abby for giving us a call 1-800-245-9779 won't you be the next call okay so um, as long as we're done with uh, Kevin and uh, uh, um, the whole class reunion here yeah. I got a couple people I'd like to thank now that's a, we'll wait I mean if you guys need more time Nicole you're good you're good okay good um, so uh, Gregory and Leanne Madzinski of Reesville thank you so much for going online and making your gift um, would also like to thank um, Kimberly and I'm gonna I'm gonna mispronounce this I apologize Manganaro of Lewistown who says congratulations to Bill Wallace an excellent job on this program well and that's very Drew and Bill, congratulations. I echo that. But I would offer those congratulations to everyone from Lewistown who worked on this project, shooting footage, being interviewed, helping with finding locations and stories. A lot of work goes into this, and it's a lot of people that make it possible. Take a moment right now to thank those people with your contribution and support of this show. The number you call is 1-800-245-9779. Of course, you can also make your gift online at wpsu.org, and you can choose your, um, your thank you gifts there as well. Remember, a gift of $75 will thank you with one DVD of the program you've watching, been watching tonight. A gift of $120 will thank you with two copies of the show you've been watching tonight. And if you'd like those delivered to you by the holiday, in case you want to give one as a gift, you need to bring your credit card to the phone in order to make that happen. So don't hesitate. Go now. 1-800-245-9779. Bill. Two more people I'd like to thank this evening. Bruce and Barbara Nielsen of Lewistown who called in with a pledge of support, and Richard and Barbara Huff of Lewistown, who called in uh, thanking us for what we're doing, and we thank them for what they're doing. Uh, I just received one more. Well, hot off the, the ink is not even dry. Hey, hey, how's everybody doing? Yeah. Hey, so we had one special thing we wanted to mention tonight. Betsy Hutton, uh, who has worked for WPSU for 28 years. Uh, she produced uh, a, a number of wonderful programs uh, from In the News to this most recent Our Town. Uh, Betsy is retiring next week, so we, we are very sad to lose Bats, Betsy Hutton. Uh, but I, I know the people in the Our Town, Lewis Town series got a, got a chance to spend some time with Betsy. And as a co-worker who has worked with her for many years, uh, it, I know it is a great loss for the station, but I know she is on to many great new and wonderful adventures in life. And Betsy, we wish you only the best uh, as you move forward. Um, and of course, I echo every one of those sentiments. Betsy, it has been my privilege to work with you for a number of years now. We will miss you terribly. Um, you've been a great addition to this station. You've developed some fabulous, fabulous content over the years, and our many viewers and audience members are all as appreciative as I am, I have no doubt. So thank you so very much. Take care. 1-800-245-9779. So I just blew her off immediately go to the phone number. 1-800-245-9779. Hey, she's retiring. She's going to have fun. She doesn't care. Or online at WPSU.org. That's the number you call. That's the website that you go to to make your gift right now. We're running out of time here. We're just about to close it out for the night. We'd love to hear from you next. We still have time to take your call. Bill? Do you have something you'd like to... Oh, you have somebody you'd like to thank? I have a couple of people I'd like to thank. Excellent. First off, I'd like to thank Betsy. I was going to do that, and then I was told that my microphone had died. So Kevin got a chance to start this. The only problem with Betsy leaving is that she's been smiling uncontrollably for about the last three weeks. And, and we're all getting very tired of it. So, <laughs> But... 
I would like to thank Ruth Raup of Lewistown for calling in with a pledge of support and Anna Hessler from McVeigh Town for calling in. Folks, it's been a really, really enjoyable night. We'd still love to hear from you, but we definitely want to thank every person who called in tonight and all the volunteers who sh showed up to work on stories for us and the folks who came in tonight to answer the phones and the parents who drove their kids over the mountain so that they could be part of this and the folks from the Mifflin County TV uh, operation at the Mifflin County High School who came over uh, with their cameras and, and shot pictures of us from behind the scenes and got a tour of the production facility so that they could see how we do it on this level. We've been really, really happy that you were part of this program tonight and we'd love to keep doing this. So call in 1-800-245-9779. Thank you. We appreciate your support and good night. You can also make your contribution at WPSU.org. Click on Donate at the top of the page. It's always available and easy to use. Thanks. Love, look at the two of us. The Carpenters Return. And yes, we Close to you, remembering the Carpenters. Friday night at 10, here on WPSU. There is one stage that is the Met and Carnegie Hall. Oh, that is too, too solid. It is the Kennedy Center. Check one, two. And a club in Austin. <laughs> 